listening to the Crooked Hearts Podcast. Hey everybody, uh, you're tuning in here to the seventh installment of the Crooked Hearts Podcast. I'm Andy the Pie Deal, and I would like to thank everybody for tuning in here. Uh, we are featuring Mr. Robert Nino today on this episode. Um, he is an L.A. transplant um, coming into the local area here, local staple guy in town. Uh, we definitely talk about his beginnings as a youngster to now, everything in between. Um, you know, chasing the dollar, balancing that with, you know, a happy family life and a music life. There is some uh, guitar tech talk in there, as Robert is a repairman and much, much more. Um, obviously a musician and gigs around here in town and all over. So we get into some of, uh, some of that with him. Uh, we do talk about the trials of practicing and playing and booking and gigging and getting paid and just the ins and outs of being a musician. Uh, for all the many years that he's been laying it down, uh, he has some great insights into, you know, the life of a musician and just trials and tribulations. So we had a great talk. We really got into some real stuff. So I really do hope you enjoy. It's a, quite an interview. So we're just going to jump right into it. Thank you all for tuning in. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Podcast. What's, Thank what's you. your name? My name is Robert Nino. Um, and... Uh, I'm local to Temecula uh, as of the last two years. Okay. Prior to that, I was 25 years in North County, San Diego, uh, in the Vista Oceanside area. And prior to that, I'm LA native. Okay. I had a few years in Northern Bay Area, Northern California, the Bay Area. Like as a youngster? Or? Yeah, well, I was born in LA and then we moved and I lived up in that region uh, until I was about 15. And then uh -huh. I moved back to LA. Okay. And then. Uh, LA was wonderful, and then when I got married, I said, you know, I know a better place for raising kids. So Vista was a better place for family, in my opinion. Right. You know, yeah. if you're a musician or single, LA is wonderful, man. Yeah, it's right. just never sleeps. You know, you're just always, yeah. you know. It was culture shock, though. I gotta say. Yeah. I mean, when sure. I moved, to, when I moved From to, LA to Vista, for sure. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. I was used to, you know, pizza 24/7, man. Yeah, if the yeah. sun went down and you didn't get a pizza, you were done. Yeah. In Vista. Yeah. So yeah, it was. Better crank the oven up and start cooking some homemade exactly. stuff. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, but it was, uh, it was good. I, I you know. I, uh, started down in Vista working for a family business that was relatively short-lived and didn't go in the direction that it was intended uh -huh. and so I found myself you know except for all intents and purposes unemployed again and it's like you know well my wife's like well, what do you want to do and I'm like well what I know how to do is you know teach and play and and repair right so, yeah you know, I'm musically inclined that's that's yeah. You know, every for years I got the you're in the music business. Wow, that's a tough business. Yeah, right. You know, so so and that was when I was young and impressionable. So I'm like, wow. So maybe I ought to try to do something legit. And do you know how many you know how many like hundred and hundred hour weeks, eighty hour weeks, you know, that I put in doing quote unquote legit work? Yeah. And I'm not any richer. So at, least, <laughs> so at least I'm happy. Yeah, right. You know, I, I, I yeah. enjoy what I do. I look forward to my day, you know, and I'm just, you know, I'm still yeah. here to tell about it. So obviously yeah. I've made enough money yeah. to tell about it. Yeah. I just saw a random quote my cousin, my cousin had put up about something about like Steve Jobs on his deathbed saying that, you know, had all these things that he was talking about and saying, don't raise your kids to worry about money, but to worry about happiness. And, and however much money he had in the bank and all this stuff, when you're on your deathbed, the money doesn't matter. It, it's 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 uh, the memories that are floating through your head while you're dying are like your loved ones and yeah. your loved memories and sharing those things. And so I, that really kind of struck to me because it's like we all chase the dollar, you know, in in this life. But you know, I mean, there's something to be said for prioritizing your things and and being. Happy, having happiness in your life is a huge factor. You Absolutely, know? you know. Well, I mean, we, my wife and I, talk about this a lot. The um, commercialized conglomerate aspects of daily living that we are bombarded with, especially through technology now. I mean, you walk yeah. in to, you know, the variety store, and you're hit with not even. It's not like there's a person there with a sample. 
it's just a screen mm -hmm. hammering you yeah. for try yeah. this product or yeah. whatever like that. Yeah. And so thirty second images of just like yeah, 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 yeah. And and so on one hand, we are being bombarded with the money making aspirations of corporations and and whatnot. And uh, and so we kind of get and permeated with that stuff and it bleeds over to the more organic aspects of our life which are the relationships you know the friends the, the family the, yeah. the, the stuff that the stuff that transcends time and yeah. distance you know yeah. I know we've all got those people in our lives where you know I haven't talked to you for a year and a half but when I sit down to do it it's like we never missed a beat it's like yeah. boom you're just right in there totally so yeah so those things and and I really strive daily for, uh, I mean, for my own well-being and uh, my sanity and to, to, to remember those things because, I mean, the, the world is an intense, or especially, I don't know about the world because, honestly, I'm not internationally traveled. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah. I know that just even, you it's know. It's a tough balance. It's a tough balance there's a lot sure. of, There's a lot of strain and strife right here, yeah. and some of it, I think, is conjured up by powers that be because yeah. I think if the general, if the general populace, this is my opinion, if the general populace was at peace and harmony with one another and there wasn't all this I think like a lot of the racial tensions that we're experiencing right now are being conjured by outside sources because if you and I on a daily basis just the humble little yeah. regular dudes that we are yeah. are chasing our tails whirling around with these trivial things not that racism isn't trivial yeah. but it's it's yeah. being, in my opinion, frenzied up. Yeah, if, it, if, if that sure. was calm, yeah. and if, if on a general level, everybody was on a, on a calm basis, and we all loved our neighbor, and we mm -hmm. were reaching out and living that more holistic, organic, yeah. and I don't mean to sound like a, you know, like Mr. Green Jeans or anything, but, but what, just like the organic versus Getting the synthetic. The yeah. Right, yeah. so if, uh, if we were there, what, we would all be able to, we'd be in more harmony. Yeah. Which means as a collective, we would look towards Washington and see the the, the shell game that's being played right. on us. Yeah, right. But as long as we're focused at, you know, garden our little fortress from our neighbor who we feel is gonna like diss us or whatever yeah, the right, situation right. is. Yeah, the then, right. yeah. then then we're not watching what's really going on yeah, and they right. get us chasing our tails. So yeah. I really try to keep that perspective. Get the big picture going and stuff. Absolutely. Of, like, close Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I hear you. And live a kind of life where yeah. I'd rather be the guy that they're they're bummed that I'm gone than glad. Right. You know, yeah. I, it's like, yeah. man, oh man, he's gone. Rather yeah. than, whew, thank God that dude's out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a good way to kind of put your imprint on things for sure. That's a good outlook. I dig it. So, so take me back to you. You're a guitarist. Mm -hmm. um, give me your story. How did you, what was your first guitar? How did you learn to play guitar? What inspired you to pick a guitar up? Wow. So nutshell version of that, because mm -hmm. it's a long story, right. but uh, we'll try to keep it reasonable. I cannot recall a time in my thinking from as far back as I have memories of just the elation emotionally from the sound of steel strings vibrating. Uh -huh. It just charged me. Um, my mom, you know, took the generic parenthood route and it's not that wasn't a derogatory statement but yeah. like she enlisted me in piano lessons when I was young and right. I, I just it just it didn't click it, it was not take. my click yeah. and you know and I, besides I had the uh, the knuckle smacking um, you know piano teacher where if your hands fell down come out your yeah, knuckles right. were whacked and I'm thinking well yeah. that's inspirational yeah, right. right thanks Nazi so so um, but about the time I was nine I didn't I, I finally talked my way into guitar lessons. However, they wouldn't buy me my own guitar. They loaned me my stepdad's, it was a 70s Yamaha nylon string classic guitar. Yeah. So it had a two by four for a neck, right. and he was 6'4 and about 300 pounds, so the action was a mile high, but right. I didn't know good action and bad action. I thought, oh, yeah. it's a guitar, That's yeah. right? This is how they all are. Exactly, <laughs> so you just think, it's a guitar, it's a guitar. It's a guitar. So stuff to play, but that, that must be how they are. <laughs> right, so, and but the thing about it was, I could tell the, 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 the timber of the nylon strings over steel strings. Yeah. And so it wasn't the most inspirational thing and I really, really did struggle playing it. I couldn't get my hand around it. And the higher the action, you know, the farther you gotta push the string oh, down. Yeah. So by the time you get one string depressed, it's so far deep in a crevice between the other two strings 
beside your finger that you're muting those out. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was a mess. Yeah. And on top of it, I didn't even have pride of ownership of the instrument. It wasn't like I could put a wacky package sticker yeah, right. on the guitar yeah. because no it was my stickers on that. Yeah, thing, no man. garbage yeah, pails, yeah, exactly. Yeah, none, of, none of that stuff. I couldn't do anything to the guitar because it didn't belong to me. Right. It was a, it was a, I was a yeah. trial basis. So I was struggling along, struggling along, and one day my mom asked the instructor, how's he doing? And, well, you know, he's got more of the temperament of a drummer. So my mom yanks me out of lessons and buys me a pair of drumsticks. And this was, this will give you a, a, a insight to my age. She put me in, I was in third grade and I went to band class and played drums. Okay. So I had a little practice pad and, and yeah. drumsticks and I kind of got, you know, going with that a little bit, but that was short lived too. So I kind of just about that time. You lumped around. Yeah. Kind of sound yeah, like, yeah. I mean, so I, Easily distracted. Yeah, I, yeah. you know, got a 20-inch motocross bike and just continued to like pedal my brains out. Yeah, but uh, um, but always loved music and just you know music was huge, huge, huge part of just you know the soundtrack of my existence. Totally. And um, and so then uh, about the time I was 14 in high school. I remember there was a kind of a posse of us buddies that hung out and for one reason or another I couldn't make the trip but they all this is in Northern California we lived in uh, East East Livermore Livermore is, yeah I know that area okay yeah. yeah so at the time I was living in Livermore and they all made the trek to Guitar Center in San Francisco and I couldn't go right so the next thing I know is like everybody's got a guitar all my buddies got a guitar and they're yeah. you know and I didn't get one so um, <laughs> So I, I bought this basket case guitar from a friend of mine's older brother that had one, and it was like a 69 Yamaha, which if I'd have known then what I know now, I wouldn't uh -huh. have done what I did, but however, it was basket case. And so I liked it, the neck and the body, and but I was gonna like upgrade the bridge and pickups and do all these things to yeah. it. And about that time, I moved to LA. I moved back to LA to live with my mom. And uh, now this was like 19, 80 and uh, the Schecter Charvel wave was just starting to okay. well, it hadn't crested yet it was coming up mm -hmm. so every local music store like Pete's Music yeah. you walk into a mom and pop shop yeah. like that and there were stacks of body blanks and bins of necks and they were all made for Fender-esque type stuff mm -hmm. and so I was a huge Hagar fan in the day and okay. I still am and yeah. he played a Fire Engine Red Explorer, yeah. and I was like sold on Explorers. Okay. So I bought this Charvel Explorer body, and I was yeah. gonna mount. Then I and I said, well, I've got this Yamaha neck. I'm gonna do this, and it had a cool headstock. Oh, and it look yeah, thing. I was gonna yeah. Frankenstein it together, but I knew nothing about what I was yeah. doing. You're like Eddie Van Halen can do it. I can't. Exactly. Yeah. More or less. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking he did it. I could do it. Yeah. So I knew nothing about scale length or any variations like that. So I had this box full of pieces, and the and my friend had done the same thing, and he like. He, he bought it, remember the Star Bodies? Mm -hmm. So he had a Charvel Star, okay. and he bought a Strat-style neck and bolted it together and just kind of went straight ahead. I was taking this Yamaha neck, which I didn't realize was Gibson scale length, uh -huh. but the thing was laid out for Fender scale length, right. the Charvel parts yeah. were. So um, my buddy, who's uh, at the time still a good friend of mine, he's, his father was like a cannonball run guy. He was into big time Motorhead, so okay. they, he used to do the cannonballs across the uh, across the country, um, and the gumball rallies and stuff like that. So, so my my buddy, who's a great guitar player, but also was a Motorhead. Okay. So he had a '66 GT Mustang, and he had the motor in the shop. So one day he's like, "Hey, I got to get the block out of the shop. Can you borrow your mom's car?" I mean, we're both like barely got our licenses. He's like, can you borrow your mom's car? So so we're gonna so I got it backed up into this bay in this industrial complex, loading the motor, yeah. and I look over and I see guitar bodies hanging out of another unit. So I'm yeah. like, load it up, I'll be right back. And I went over to talk to this guy and it wound up being a cat, um, his name's James Tyler. And he is Steven's brother. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Nothing. No relation. Um, James Tyler Guitars. Um, he's one of those elite kind of guys where most people go never heard of him. Uh -huh. So it's like if you I don't if you don't know him, you don't know him. Yeah. If you know him, you're like, oh my god, James Tyler. Yeah. So he's actually currently in production. You know, he has been for 25 years or better of his own guitars. Very high end. Like boutique stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Worldwide though. Okay. Worldwide. I mean, like yeah. stuff's huge in Japan and okay. you know all the and so 
I, I basically got his card and I said, hey, I'm putting a guitar together, but I don't know what I'm doing. Can I bring my parts in and spread them out on your bench one day and have you give me an estimate on what it's going to take to do this? Okay. So that's how we I met him. So one thing led to another. I went back, made that appointment, and I'm doing it. And he's the one that discovered that the neck was one schedule and the body was scheduled for another scale length. And long story short, I didn't... You got have all the logistics kind of thrown your right, way. Right. You're kind Am of I going, rambling? Okay, wait a minute. Am no. I rambling? Okay. No, you're great. Cool. So, so I didn't, so I had just moved to LA, I didn't have a job, so I was tied on cash. So I'm like, well, what's the estimate? And he gives me a price and I'm like, all right, I can probably come up with a few bucks. Can I, you know, might, I might take some time what did he or whatever. Get back then? I oh, want to geez, know, like, man. Like, it was 40 like, bucks or something. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was, it was, I mean, to finish the body, because the body was unfinished. Okay. Um, to finish the body and whatnot, I mean, we were, we were probably like, Three hundred dollars to finish it and assemble it. Okay. You know. Yeah, that's. I mean, finish work is definitely. Yeah. Pricey for sure. Right? Exactly, and he yeah. was. You know, that's back in the day where he's shooting nitro. He wasn't yeah. shooting any of the. Yeah, right. You know, the uh, catalyzed lacquers or polys that are going on these days. Right. So, um, so I went there, and so we got to talking, and he had just now he started out behind. Uh, in the back room of Norman's Rare Guitars. Oh, okay. You ever heard of Norman? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so he yeah. started, he knew, he's yeah. known Norm forever. Okay. So he started at the back room of Norm's in a place where Norman's back room, because it was a small place, it was all showroom and a little back room that was floor to ceiling in cases. Okay. And he had a little bench that was just barely long enough to set a guitar on. Uh -huh. yeah. Because these cases on both sides right. from floor to ceiling. So he worked there and uh, and then when he got, so he had just moved into this shop of his like three months prior to me meeting him. Okay. And um, so it was just like an empty shop. He had one workbench and another table, like a folding table and, that, and a, a, yeah. a, a shelving unit and that was about the extent of right, it. Right, small. Air compressor for shooting finishes and that was it. So we got to talking and he's like, well, I need some workbenches built. And I said, well, if you buy the materials, I'll do the labor and help to trade out for the, you helping with the guitar. Okay. And that's how our relationship blossomed. And after watching me, you know, my, I knew how to use tools. So after well, yeah, that- Yeah, like some carpentry stuff yeah, or something? Going yeah, I grew on? up, I grew yeah. up uh, in a trades family. So I, okay. I had a lot of trade background. And so that, he was like, wow, you're actually, you're, you can saw lumber straight and make the cuts right the first time. And right, yeah, he's yeah. Work, he's got workbenches I built then still in his shop today. Awesome, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so he offered me a job and I'm like, he's like, do you need a job? And I'm like, well, duh, Yeah. you know? I and I figured, yeah. you know, working next to guitars versus, you know, working at, you know, the supermarket as a right, bag boy or something sure. is a lot better. So, but it was a it was a great thing. So that was the essence. That, so that started it out, and I've been playing ever since I was about fourteen. Okay. And um, it came on with James. So that was maybe what your first electric guitar when he did he put that thing together. Yeah. Well, you? that was the first one I owned. Um, right. In the interim, about when I was when I was about fourteen, a friend of mine had this old silver tone that was sitting in his garage, and the strings were like they were so rusty they were like files you could yeah. literally lance your fingers open playing yeah. it so i'm like i gotta change the strings on this thing so, yeah, I, right. so I, I learned on a silver tone okay and played that for a couple of years until i moved and had to give it back okay and then my buddy who my buddy that i was telling you about with the motor um he had the classic the solid body double cut ibanez artist uh-huh and he had his star guitar and a half a dozen other electric guitars so when i moved down there he's like well here why don't you borrow this and i had this top of the line, you know, full abalone, 20, you know, first fret mark, deluxe edition, bound neck headstock, Ivan as artist to play. Okay. So I'm like, man, this is, this is the real deal here. You yeah, know, it's right. like, I feel like Santana, you yeah. know? So, <laughs> so, uh, so I learned on that and then got my guitar together and, and you kind of blossomed from there and, you know, joined bands and got right. it together. Um, and just apprenticed with James. Well, James was growing more and more and more and more and more. And there's a guy, uh, you've heard of Andy Brower? Uh -huh. All right, so Andy Brower in the 80s, uh, in that time, was in the, he got into like the cartage business in North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So like all, the, I mean, he, and he was also like a tech. So he was teching for, he got into the studio scene. So he was teching for the Brothers Johnson, you know, uh, Shaka Khan and Rufus. Um, Kiss, 
I mean, everybody that was anybody. So then he just started all studio, all, tech all work? studio te okay. tech work. Like he was doing intonations and setups mm -hmm. and and whatnot. But a lot of times he was bringing those to us. He'd say, "I got this guitar. It belongs to you know Lewis Johnson, yeah, you know, or right. or, or uh, George Johnson or whatever." Yeah. And then he would take it back. And so we were doing that. So between he and and what, we started just going up. So we were working with Mike Landau and Luke and. Kevin Dukes and just all of you know all the big names yeah. from the day. A lot of them were the road dogs. Like everybody knows Rod Stewart. Yeah, right. But when you go to see Rod Stewart, who are the other six guys on stage with yeah, him? Yeah, right. Yeah. Those were our clientele. Okay. Those yeah. kind of guys. So mostly not, session guys. Session guys. Yeah, right. And, you know the world class road dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, so He's I. He's probably from like Sound City and shit like that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. SIR yeah. and all that stuff. Right. So, yeah. So. So these guys were my mentors. I learned a lot. It, it, you know, this whole thing for me was kind of a. I'm still sorting through. Seeds were planted. That, yeah. You know, we're just. They're it wasn't fluke, but it wasn't planned. It sounds like it's like you not kinda, at all. You not know, all. it was. It was it, uh, more blessing than curse. But totally. you know, the yin and yang of life. For every yeah, blessing, it, there's, it, there's, there's a there's a pull. There sure. is. There yeah. is. And there are there are things, concepts, uh, uh, things that you know are just dormant germinating in my mind that I've not yet had the time to explore that path yet mm -hmm. but it has shaped my thinking even on the things that I am doing yeah so it's it's been really it's it's been a great life yeah but uh, you know a couple of things that were really that I really had to come to grips with um, some of the more uh, dominant occurrences were Hanging out, like a lot of those guys were, were really cool, like when they're playing the baked potato or um, there's a place in Santa Monica at the time called At My Place, just some of the bigger clubs up in that area. Mm -hmm. I'd go tech for them. They'd go, hey, you want to make 200 bucks tonight? Come tech for me. I'm playing, you know, I've got a gig with whoever down at this club. And I'm like, Shh, yeah. duh, yeah, yeah. I'm on it. And I really learned a lot about sound and how the pros do it and whatnot, which was been frustrating because not being in that league per se myself, right. you know, on the fringes of that league, yeah, but not in sure. that league. So I go home to the local dudes and I'm trying to like convey this stuff yeah, and they're right. like, yeah. who do you think you are? You know, yeah, you, you right. bossy jerk. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not yeah. trying to do that. I'm just yeah. saying, I learned this from yeah. Luke today. You want to sound like Toto? Yeah. Then let's do this, yeah. you know? Yeah, let's then, implement some things that the pros are doing. Yeah. Exactly. It'll only up our game. Exactly, but you know, you know, you know when you're some people when you're hear it. you know when you take the and, and I don't mean take by force, but when you assume the role of chief amongst Indians, yeah. there's a lot of mutiny. Yeah, right. Uh, so, yeah. so yeah. It, it was it was tough. But uh, one of the things personally that I, I grappled with was I really was acutely aware of all the things that I didn't know. I didn't know every 13th chord and I didn't mm -hmm. know all of this stuff about the guitar, about the music, about theory, about the neck, all of those things I, I, I didn't know. So, you know, your, your thinking is better hit the woodshed. Yeah. And the, uh, which is good to a degree, but I think where I erred, and so if I have anything to lay down to your listeners, it would be make, go out right now, go out, book a gig, and I don't mean to sound like, because we'll talk probably more on the flip side of this sentiment right. uh, later, but but go out and make music now with what you got. Make the best music you possibly can. Because right. when you, um, expletive free speech oh, here? Do it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. When, you have, when, you, when, you, when you go out to, uh, to a gig, whether it's your band or you're sitting in on an open mic or you're sitting in with someone else's band and you have your ass handed back to you, yeah. It changes the quality and perspective of your practice time. When you go back home, you're like, I will never have that happen to me again. Yeah. And your practice time takes on a whole new dimension where if you're sitting in there by yourself just you're hoping you're gonna practicing, yeah. you're, you're practicing hoping to get great. Yeah. It's a little bit f fragmented. Yeah. You could get a little yeah. lopsided, like you'll right. only practice your favorite things, you won't yeah. practice the things you're unfamiliar with. Yeah. So when you get in a position where you gotta play something you're unfamiliar with, you go home and you're like, well, that's what I gotta get familiar with. So it yeah. pushes you. Totally. And and you grow Yeah, you break quicker. out of the box and you kind of go into other unknown territory that right. like forces you to branch out and be more of a universal player and be able to hold your ground and not just one particular. But it takes everything up a next yeah. level. Yeah. And you're not postponing your musical career or getting out there, getting known, networking. Yeah. Uh, it, it refines you. If you want to sharpen the edge faster, play live. 
play yeah, live. Because, right. And most of yeah. the cats that I've met, like when I've choked, most of the guys that are good are, they're not, I've, I've met some arrogant guys that were like, you know, see, I put you where you belong. Right. But those were far and few between compared yeah. to the guys that were like, dude, here, let me give you a tip, and, and they'll come at, they'll like give you a lesson mm -hmm. at the club after the set, you know? I mean, Humble. they're, yeah, yeah, they're wonderful, yeah. wonderful cats. Right. Yeah. They're just, they're, I mean, and that's the community. Yeah. So I learned that, that was probably one of the most effective yeah. things that I've learned for yeah. me, is just getting out there and doing it. This sentiment goes with a recent interview that I just saw of, I mean, it was thrown out there, but I'm a big Dave Grohl fan, uh -huh. and he was just, they were asking him kind of, with, with the way the music scene is now and with all the things and you know for a, these young to say some teenagers that are in a band or whatever playing in the garage and aspire to whatever what's your advice and he's like just go out book gigs and play 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 the more you play the more you learn the better you get the tighter the music gets the more lessons learned the, in this day and age the only thing to do is to play Absolutely. The more you play, you know. You got to play. So. Playing is playing is the essence, and the more comfortable and the more second nature, the when 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 the bass player or, or the keyboard player or whoever you know just takes a left turn in the middle of the song and it turns into something that no one even ever thought of before, mm -hmm. you know, and you can hang, yeah, and not lose it and just sit yeah. there, you know, train wreck, like, right, yeah. yeah. Those kind of skills are priceless because that's those are the skills that the cat like when I listen back to like anything that was originally recorded on vinyl. Mm -hmm. So you know all you know the great albums of our day, yeah. the stuff that made me want to play in music in the first place. And I don't care if it's Sly and the Family Stone or Robin Trower or Fog Hat Live or you know just all that stuff. Those magical moments that were just there were a result of their ability to fall into yeah. magical moments and not be like, no, nope, my computer yeah. program didn't say we yeah. could make that stuff. Yeah. You know? I was interviewing a band here and, and it uh, part of this type of topic came up and I was uh, mentioning with playing live, the element of feeding off the crowd, feeding off the vibe, feeding off the energy, being in a live situation where countless, numerous times, being on stage and my fingers doing a scale or doing a riff or doing something that it was unplanned, it was improvised, and it was mind-blowing for me, maybe I don't know about the crowd, but for myself to go, I'll never be able to recreate that, right. I'll never be, I, I, God, I hope someone was recording that because I'd love to go back and relearn that, right. but the thing of closing your eyes and just doing something where you're in that moment you you hear the crowd or you hear the people you're on stage the energy levels are going the band's tight everything's locked in and you're just feeding off all of that and you're able to be so entranced in that moment that you're doing things that you've never done that you may never do again that you know that's that's living that's music that's yeah. a, that's when it's alive you know that alive factor of you know like i say you, maybe you may not be able to recreate that moment ever again you know what i mean but but soaking that up those moments only happen when you're in it when you're right. doing it live you know and so that goes to booking the shows and playing the more you play the more maybe those moments are going to happen Absolutely. where you're setting that setting that scenario up to happen more and more and more because you're out gigging and you're playing and you're closing your eyes and you're vibing and you're feeling it but that shit ain't going to happen when you're in your room playing by yourself you no, know what i mean no. it's just not even if you had good backing tracks it's just not you it know just it's just not. Know. Maybe, once, maybe a little bit maybe a little bit but but you know? yeah. well i mean there's a god you just just that last statement of yours just set off like a grenade's worth of little comeback topics yeah. but one i was going to say and i'll just thumbnail them one Uli John Roth talks, like he does these seminar training classes and he talks about that zone and finding that zone. But I, the other thing too is that, you know, a skill, there's skill and there's talent. Skill is like, I, I often like, I think back to the old days when, you know, cashiers and checkers had the 10 key, the prices into yeah, the thing. Right. Man, if you like, if you hired me right now, I'd be with like one finger going click, dude, dude, click, dude, dude. click. <laughs> but I can guarantee you that if you put me at a register for eight hours a day and lines of angry, frustrated people wanting to get out of the store, that my skill level would increase 
quickly. Yeah, right. It's a, yeah. it's a it's a skill, yeah. but you have to put yourself into those things. Yeah. So 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 in like likewise when we're talking we'll relate this to the topic of music and playing mm -hmm. and it doesn't really matter the instruments though you and I are no, both guitar yeah, players right. but you know it doesn't matter whatever your whatever your instrument in yeah. vocals or whatever um, you it's a skill yeah. it's a skill being able to access the those levels of consciousness or subconsciousness mm -hmm. in the moment is a skill but you won't ever develop that skill unless you're put into the environment where mm -hmm. those situations happen and right. you can you can yeah. do that. So again, going back to put yourself on stage, put yourself yeah. in positions where those moments, they'll never happen without a band. Totally. Yeah. They don't always happen with a band. They don't. Yeah. But, but it's if never they're gonna, gonna happen, it's yeah. never gonna happen if you're not playing with a band. <laughs> you gotta set the scenario up to create the environment for you to be able to tap exactly. into that. For exactly. Sure, you know? And that's what yeah. and, and so everything everything yeah. in life, everything in life is a skill. Yeah. I mean yeah. you know, being a parent, I mean my wife and I raised six kids, so it's like constantly putting yourself into a situation, you know, and yeah. it's like you know, good or whether it's good or bad. It's all about it. It is what it is. Yeah. It's all how you think about it. Totally. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, not to say that practicing in your room isn't going to get you anywhere because it is. You have to learn the fundamentals. You Absolutely. have to get those basics to get yourself to be comfortable on stage right. so that you're able to acquire the moment. You know, that's I'm not saying that, but, you know, I mean, for sure. I mean, there's a there's a moment of shutting all of that off and just tapping into the into intuitiveness right. of the moment, you know, right. of like tapping into that energy and that thing that where where you're not thinking about it, well, you know, the eyes are closed, <clears throat> the fingers are moving and you don't really know what's going to happen next. Absolutely. It could be a train wreck. You might be on the cusp of just total failure, you know, but well, taking that gamble is, is, is what makes you feel alive and what creates these moments. So well, Miles Davis said that there are no bad notes. Now you might hit a wrong note, uh -huh. but it's not a bad note. Right. The difference is what do you do after you hit it? Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, yeah. How do you recover? Do you recover or do you? Exactly. <laughs> and and so yeah. You know, and Jimmy, what was it, Jimmy Page? You know, if you play something wrong, do it two or three times and make and it. That sounds right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so, yeah. but um, I recall a um, article I read in Guitar Player. I, I I'm not sure if the the interviewer was was Jude Gold or Mike Belinda. So I'm crediting them here now for that. But I think it was like 2009. It was an Alan Holdsworth interview, and I just uh -huh. remember reading the interviewer asked. Has your practice regimen changed or anything over the years? And Alan's response was just, it, it was one of the best perspectives. I, I, I adopted it, man. What is Shakespeare? Assume a virtue and it's yours. It's like, okay, Al, I'm on it. But it was a great perspective. And, the, and he says, well, I basically got three modes when I practice. One is mindless noodling. Yeah. One is... Um, maybe more specific where I'm working on a particular fingering or pattern or scale or whatever he's trying to nail and he's mm -hmm. repeating it da -da -da -da, with, with intent. He's not just yeah. meandering. And then the last mode is trying to um, incorporate those particular patterns or something like that. But the, which was, okay, so that, that's fairly generic. I think we all sort of practice with that mode. But what right. was really, really the, the, the caveat on this was he said, I find that it takes me. This is Alan who plays for a living, right? Yeah, right. right? Takes Virtual. me about, about two years before something I'm working on starts to manifest in my improvisation automatically. Okay. So if it takes Alan, who probably could sit around and play his guitar for 10 or 12 hours a day. A day. If you, you know, and he yeah. probably does. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. Um, maybe not every day, yeah. but he practices a yeah. lot. Right. A lot more than you and I with Imagine families. Imagine an average I mean, player right. who, you know, a guy with maybe an hour. Right, a guy most, with kids you know? in a day like, job that's trying to yeah. still swing as hard as the pros. Yeah. I mean, you know, God bless you because yeah. you know, if you're married to a woman that understands that you can't not do what you do, yeah. you're blessed. But um, but I figured if it took Alan two years to get uh, a passage into his improv, what's the then, years for an average guy? Yeah, like exactly. Six, seven. Yeah, exactly, eight? exactly. So you so all I can say is like if you heard the thing, 
it's kind of a generic thing, like 10,000 hours is mastery. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. so I don't know if it's 10,000 hours. For some guys, it might be 12,000. For some guys, it might be 8,739 hours. Right. But at some point, you have a, a spot in your psyche where it, it transitions to imprinted automatic totally. intuition yeah. versus you know conjured thought process. Yeah. So my thing is, is um, and I tell my students this, I tell them, you know, when I'm teaching, I'm like, okay, I don't know what it is, but if I had Tinkerbell right here in this little container and I could smack you over the head and you get pixie dust on you and yeah. she would enchant you with the spell that said, a hundred hours of concentrated playing, that means at home, really working at it, right. not staring at the ceiling fan yeah, with yeah. your guitar in your hand. Yeah, focused. Focused. I said, how quickly would you put that hundred hours in? Uh, an hour a week? Okay, cool. In two years, you'll be the world's greatest guitar player, which right. in guitar world isn't too bad. If I yeah. could be the world's greatest guitar player in two years, I go for it. Yeah, right. But 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 what if you instead of an hour a week, what if you played an hour a day? Yeah. That time frame, same hundred hours, would drop down to three and a half months. Yeah, right. Two hours a day would be a month and a half. Yeah, right. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm cranking up the coffee pot and I'm going to do four 24 hour days yeah. plus four hours <laughs> then I'm going to sleep for two days. This out, I'm, then I'm going to sleep for two days and yeah. wake up at the end of a week and be the greatest guitar yeah, player right. right but it really so it's the more that you can aggregate those hours yeah. you know and it doesn't have to be two hours at a time you know wake up a half an hour early and play for play for a half an hour before you go to work Right. You know, if you have a guitar in your office or whatever, play for an hour at lunch. Right. Come home, get the kids put down, you know, and play for an hour before you go to bed. You can divide it up. Yeah, right. You know, and yeah. sometimes those intervals are a lot better for you. Yeah, but, make but, the time. But yeah. it's doing it. It's yeah. doing it, man. You yeah. got to you gotta you, do it. You touch on something where I've had, I've, I've only given a few lessons here and there. I'm not really, I don't, you know, say that's my thing. But I, being that I've been playing for over 20 years, I've had a family members or friends who teach me some lessons or whatever, this and that. And it comes down to, for me, that I break the simplest form I can break it down to an exemplary form would be, there's there's only seven chords, start with that. I mean, yeah, there's a lot more to all that, but but basics are, there's, there's, there's only seven chords, so it's not that bad. Right. But it's like surfing. Someone can show you how to get on the board, but after that, what? you got to take the board out and go get on it and paddle out and try to catch a wave. Right. As many days as you can, as many hours that you put into it, is how better you're going to get at it. Absolutely. But so you're I can show to... you the seven chords, but you got to go home and you have to practice those seven chords. I can't really magically pixie dust wand, yeah. you know, where you know, even I had a friend that was like, you know, didn't know the chords or anything, but but he wanted to shred like Hendrix. He, those scales that I, when I play that Hendrix stuff, I want to do that. And I'm going, but it just doesn't work that way. Right. You know, it's just, you, there's a, you got to put the work in. You got to, you, there's basic things that have to be learned before you can jump to that. I, right. I love your enthusiasm and that you would, you know, that's where you inspire, but it's, takes work to get there, bro. It just yeah. doesn't magically happen overnight, but you know? And Trees don't grow fruit. They grow baby fruit that grows to be fruit. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you're, no, I don't yeah. care what, you're waiting. Yeah. And you're working. Yeah. So, so you got to fall in love with the process though. See, yeah. that's the key of everything, you know, guitar playing, marriage, gigging, you know, you got to be just as in love with setting up and tearing down as you are with playing. Right. And I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, you can, I'm sure someone will contrast that or contradict that, but, yeah. but really it's yeah. part, because it's part of it. It is part it's of part it. It's part of yeah. it. Yeah, you know, it's, process, it goes with yeah. it, you know? Mm -hmm. The reward of playing the con, you know, the 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 yin to that yang is schlepping the gear. Totally. So you know, and life is, you know, when people say, "God, I hate Mondays," I'm like, dude, that's like one seventh of your life. That is a big percentage of your life to hate. Yeah, right. You know, I've tried having bad days, and yeah. you know, they never worked out. And I finally got smart and said, "Well, screw them. I'm just never going to have a bad day anymore." Yeah. I, I don't. It's I, a choice. I, it it's is. A choice. It really is yeah, a choice. For sure, yeah. So. So you just go for it, right. and 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 throw your and, and you know and add it, when you're when you have an attitude of gratitude and you have an attitude where it doesn't matter what's going on, it's not going to be a bad day. It's just a challenge that I got to get over. Yeah. you know, it's like it's like you were saying surfing. When you're out there, good surfers 
they can read the, the swell. Mm -hmm. They can tell, uh, let that one go by, let mm -hmm. that one, here it is. Wait for the good one. And they can wait for the right one and yeah. not wear themselves yeah. out paddling for the two footers when, yeah. they're, when they know that if I just wait, there'll be a four footer coming uh -huh. in, yeah. you know, and there'll be, and sometimes there's a four footer coming in, but where you are, yeah. it's not breaking there. You that have to take that. Yeah. It's not breaking where you are, so yeah. you would have to paddle too hard to yeah, catch it, so you let it go it by. Takes, yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. smarts, man. It's efficiency. Totally. And it's getting... But that thought process alone is a skill. Yeah, and how many years and does it take to read those waves yeah. and to know that? And to, it's, you know, you got to fall on your face and exert yourself so many times doing the wrong thing before you know how to do the right thing. Exactly. You know? So, I mean, it's the, like the yin so and yang. It's the learning. But from, I think, too... You know? I mean, things like this podcast is great because it's, it, you know, it, everything that you and I have learned through sweat and, and just time and yeah. long hours and, right. you know, smashed fingers and everything else yeah, that right. you've acquired along yeah. the way. If you take it to the grave, because you're not taking, your, someone will buy your guitar after you're dead. Right. But you... But if you take this knowledge and this inspiration and the, the, the techniques to the grave, what a waste. Yeah, what a waste. Yeah. It's like our duty, in my opinion, is to school. Pass it along. Pass it along. Yeah. School your neighbor. It's not just about the young guys that were older then. Mm -hmm. It's reaching laterally out mm -hmm. to Inspire the, the, like the, the cats that we're playing with currently. Yeah. Because they may not have some of the info that we do or whatever, right. and, and I don't mean that with any arrogance at all. I'm just no. saying it's a community. Spread the love. If you're not, sure. yeah, yeah. love yeah. is the key. If you're yeah. not doing it with a with a heart of loving the community and loving the the craft and loving the 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 art and everything, yeah. you know, yeah, for then sure. then I think then maybe it could get mistaken as arrogance or something. Yeah, less That's than true, less right? than. Yeah. But I mean. If you preface it all with a big heart, I think yeah. it goes a long way. Right. So, so um, I noticed you seem kind of like a strat guy. Oh, dude. Is that fair to say? If I, I my my motto is if I was banished to a desert island and could only take one of my guitars, and I am a guitar slut. Yeah. I mean, I, I love everything guitar. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's a guitar if it's got strings on it. Yeah. For sure. I, I, there, that, that doesn't have a home, does it? It does now. Uh, but, <laughs> but no, if I was banished to it, I would be a strat. Yeah. Yeah. I would dig your white strat with the upside down headstock on it. Yeah, that's that's a production model Fender. Is that what it's that is? It's the '69 or '68 tribute model to Hendrix. So I have the black Voodoo Caster. Okay, the same. You one know what? Just... I wanted the black one. Yeah. Back in what '09 or whatever, when they were first released, Guitar Center in San Marcos had three whites, three blacks, and I wanted the black one. And by the time I went back to pull the trigger, they were down to two white ones, and I. Took my best Those aren't the choice. tribute strats because the tribute strats were completely flipped. No, I've yeah. never seen them. Yeah, when I worked at Fender, I was I was a worked really? as a temp, but this was in ninety seven, ninety eight. Oh wow! I did. And they had a tribute white strat, and it was a full on left handed body flipped for a right for a right handed player. So body and neck flipped upside down. Okay. And then the Voodoo Caster was right handed body, left handed neck. Wow. And that's the one so that, that I... So that was back in the 90s. Nine, uh, late, yeah. late 90s. Because mine, the white one you're referring yeah. to is... And actually, I have two of them. Okay. Um, the white one you're referring to is... I, I, I want to say 06, 09, somewhere okay. around there. And I remember it was... Um, I got some interesting strat stories, but to finish that one. Yeah. Um, they called it the 68 Tribute model. See, this was just called the Hendrix Tribute. Yeah. Um, and the Voodoo Caster is the black one, the Hendrix Tribute as well. Right. They came out but with I'd it. never seen the the true lefty flipped. Uh -huh. I've, I saw the righty with yeah. the lefty appointments where right. they slant the pickup in the reverse direction and so, they yeah, put a reverse neck. Okay, so on that body type though, with the right handed, the pickups are still all left handed set up well, then? Yeah, okay. except, for it's in a right, it's, except for it's in a right handed pick guard, so the knobs aren't under your arm. Right. They're down yeah, where they totally. belong. Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah. the, the essence, the, the two things that flipping a lefty righty does is it puts the low E string to the far tuner on the yeah. headstock, so the tension is a little different yeah, on the right. strings, yeah. and the the bridge pickup the is pickup. slanted in the opposite direction. Totally. Yeah. Other than that, the neck and bridge pickup are still in the same yeah. position and everything's yeah. cool, except back in Hendrix's day with staggered pull pieces, 
on the on the on pickups, the pickups. They were organized differently. Right. At which so those three, Added a little the, bit to the those tone. three yeah. things were what they attribute right. a big portion yeah. of it to. And then so, having the whammy bar a little on the top part. Right. Was a little different as right. well, but yeah. So, so, so I mean, so, so, so mine almost, is basically a righty with a flipped pickup. Okay, yeah. And I, I don't even have the stock yeah. pickups. No, I love that guitar. I saw, I saw the picture. I saw I was going through some of your pictures, and I was, but um, I was down to those two. I mean, I what happened was I was working at Fender as a temp, and I befriended a guy that would work there for thirty years or whatever. And at the time, he said uh, we get one item per year. 50% off Oh wow! and we're coming up to January and it doesn't roll over and I haven't bought anything this year and I'm not gonna and hey if there's something you want me to get keep it on the DL uh -huh. but I'll, I'll you float me the cash so I'll this, get you whatever. As soon as this airs it'll be on this the DL. This is 97 so the guy doesn't even work there. Okay. Now, <laughs> but, um, yeah so so and so I had my eye on that I was a big Hendrix guy and mm -hmm. and and so then I started kind of talking to different dudes that I was, you know, friends with that. Thing. And I was like, what What do you think between the white one and the black one? And getting a little it feedback. And there was, I can't remember now what issues there was with the white one, but there was a couple things that was a reoccurring thing that I heard from different guys that Did the black there. one have a rosewood fretboard? Or maple. 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 So they were both maple necks. Yes. Okay, but yeah. just black body there was or, just or something, There was white. a couple, there was like two things that that was a reoccurring something, and I can't remember what it was, but but the black one didn't have those issues, and that's so funny, that's, what, I mean, that's what made me go with the black one, you that's know? That's funny, because it's like, theoretically, it's just paint. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, I don't know if it was electronic issue or what, or, wow. or something. I just, you know, I mean, this is... So you, you still have it? I still have it. Awesome, still I, have to see, it. I want to see it it's sometime. It's got little cracks in the neck and stuff from the, you know, the aging and whatnot and all that. And wow. Yeah, I love that guitar. It's been one of my main axes for since then, ever since then, you know. Right. So, um, but I saw your white strat, and I was like, oh. So, so I bought that. I bought that strat, and you know, being the guitar geek that I am, are you, you a know, Hendrix guy? Um, you know what? I, I I love everybody so much. It's like I can't say you know Hendrix is the, yeah. is God or anything right. because yeah, yeah. I get. I mean. It's such a, it, everybody's yeah. language is so different. Yeah, it's like, for you know, it's sure. like, sure. Yeah. you know, y yes. Yeah. I mean, God, I loved Hendrix. How can any good guitar player not, not be into Hendrix? Exactly. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I mean, but I mean, there's just too many good ones out there. There for are, sure. there are. Yeah, it's I like, agree. I don't have, and it really, it really depends on, you know, like what, what category you might want to consider yeah. and who makes it into there as like, yeah. you know, it's like, with you know, him, as far as innovativeness, yeah, he's, oh yeah, he's he's pretty high he, up on the. He he definitely blew the lid off, and you know, seeded the thoughts of many, many, many predecessors. For sure, a successor. Yeah, and I, I mean, I really don't think. I mean, there's a lot of great guitar players out there, but for his age and what he accomplished in the short time that he did, at the period of time in you which know, he was accomplishing, there's that. A, not a lot of players today that can even touch that. I feel like. Right. You know, I mean, that's just. And sadly, it's. I, I think it's on. I think we're in. At least for this period of time, I'm hoping that it's. You know, the beauty about waves is they rise and they fall. So totally. hopefully, if yeah. we're in a lull, hopefully it's rising again. Yeah. Few, but you know, in this computer age where you you know, if you can program a computer to loop a beat, and you can rattle some repetitive slogan over it and mm -hmm. that's considered a hit song yeah versus someone that's innovatively like you know along the watchtower by hendrix you know he triple tracked a 12 string six string electric guitar mm -hmm. you know he, he was doing things there that yeah. you know like what les paul was like one of the only other cats doing yeah. it at that at that level totally. yeah you know so he was doing some great great stuff yeah but um but yeah, I got that guitar in like whenever I got it, 2006 or nine or something. Mm -hmm. And one of my students had, and, and, and I took I took the stock pickups out. I love single coil pickups. Mm -hmm. They're articulate, you know. Yes, they don't drive an amp like an EMG if you're playing metal. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. 
if I'm in a metal band, I'd still play my Strat because it would I would stand apart in the mix oh, yeah, yeah. from my EMG playing counterpart. Oh, totally. So yeah. I'm still good with That's it. That's a standard but, procedure but for sure. I yeah. love the articulation, and you can always gain up on pedals or amps mm -hmm. for what the pickups are missing. But I like the, the individual note articulation, and especially when you've got drive on, you can grab four notes and still hear them yeah. instead of just a big amalgamation oh, of mud. Murky, but yeah. I do not like single coil hum. Okay. Just the inherent that happens. Mm. So so like I use a lot of like Duncan stacks okay. and noiseless versions of single coils. Okay. So so anyway on that guitar I was trying to build a little bit more of a hot rod guitar so I put Duncan's in it and um, other than that stock mm -hmm. um, except for the, the pickups. And and I did one thing. My my only the my I can play any guitar. I've had so many, maybe thousands of guitars across the bench, and every time I'm setting one up, I kind of try to play it like the guy that would play it when he owns it. Okay. So I try to really dig in, move my hands, you know, towards the bridge, towards the neck, back and forth, play it everywhere, and you know, different guitars are ergonomically different. Totally. From not just scale length, but just the layout of the controls oh, yeah. and every, yeah. the placement of everything, pick guards, all that stuff. So. Um, so I really, so I'm, I don't get thrown by weirdness. I can, you can hand, you know, a left-handed backward strung something or other, and I can figure, you know, I can get into it fairly yeah. quickly. You know, it's not, but personally, from an intuitive personal level, I love strats. The only thing is I pull the middle tone knob out and move the volume to there because when the knob is right there, it I have to work too hard to work around it. Oh, okay. Because the way I palm mute my bridge, it's right there. So uh -huh. other than me moving the tone knob out, and okay. uh, so I've got a master tone and a master volume and a five-way. Oh, uh, okay. And that's there, uh, and Duncan's. Interesting. But okay. anyway, so my student saw one, and his parents bought him one just like mine. Sure. The Olympic white, uh -huh. except for he, and he goes, I want you to put these pickups in it, but I put black pickups and knobs on my guitar, uh -huh. and he wanted white pickups and knobs okay. on his guitar, but he wanted the exact same thing that I did, but he also wanted me to put a Floyd Rose on it. So I put okay. a Floyd Rose on his, redid the electronics and everything, yeah. and like, I don't know, eight months later, he's like, I'm selling this guitar, and I'm like, why? He goes, I just can't deal with the Floyd Rose. Yeah. Because it, Floyds are an individually, they they're are, an animal yeah. all into yeah, themselves. If you don't know how to yeah. deal with the yeah. floating bridge. And unless you're dive bombing like all the time and right. stuff, I mean, unless you're really digging in on that whammy and stuff. Right. Uh, I don't know. And yeah. they're, they're just, that's just, it's, 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 it's kind of a pain. I don't know. Well, they are, once you, again, I, they, they're, they, once you learn their language, yes. they're just as easy to tune. Do, well, yeah. no, but they're just as easy to tune and deal and navigate with. Okay. However, one thing that they will always be, if, if it's a floating version and you don't have some lockdown mechanism, right. you know, if you're doing a parallel bend where you've got your finger on the first string and then three frets up, you're gonna bend the B string up to equal the same note. You're doing yeah. one of those. Well, because it floats, when you bend the B string up, it pulls the bridge, which makes the static note you're holding dump flat. Okay. So you have to learn to do those parallel bends and bend both strings, whereas uh -huh. on a Les Paul or a hardtail, you can just in the one string because the other yeah. one stays static and right. it doesn't move. So there's there's idiosyncrasies to a yeah. Floyd or any floating bridge mechanism yeah. that you have. But yeah. uh, I don't but know. I mean, I'm with, not. With that said, I've got a lot of people's. You know, it goes out of tune. And my strap doesn't go out of tune when I whammy. Right? I, I don't know. I mean. Well, I, I, you know, um, a good strat bridge set up properly will, I mean, unless you're yanking yeah, and right. living crap out of you it, know. they're usually, and, and if they do, if it does go out of tune, you will find probably nine times out of ten that it'll go sharp. Because what happens is when you dump the whammy bar down, the strings go slack. So the windings on the post open up. Then when you let the bar go, the bottom winding tightens up, but there's still slack on the other two, oh. meaning your string is going to come back sharp. Okay. So one technique that those of us that play, because I play a lot of stock strap bridges too. Yeah. Basically, if it's out of tune, just somewhere where you get a, an so eighth note worth yeah. of dead time, you just bend that string. You mute it out and bend it, yeah. boom, stretch it back stretch in, it back in yeah. and boom, you're back in tune. Yeah, you know? makes sense. So yeah. it's just, again, but that 
that's as much of an idiosyncrasy yeah. as learning to use yeah. a Floyd in it the is. first place. I mean, I'm not a big like. I mean, I, I like Pantera, but I'm just not a big right. like or '80s and that right. stuff. You know, I mean, like I said, Hendrix, some surf stuff, a little. Yeah. You know, kind of that I kind do of, more chord swell. Yeah. And little stuff. You know, I don't do the. It doesn't huge. really affect it, I think, as much when yeah. you're in that type of. But yeah. when you're just. Van Halen oh, yeah. or whatever, you know, exactly. those huge bombs. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get some, you know, issues. But so, um, yeah, I also noticed that Telecaster that's all primed up on the body and everything has an upside down headstock. So is that oh, something yeah, you, yeah. Do you, okay, do you so, dig the upside down headstock thing? Well, not. I'm not again. Like I said, it's it's a guitar, so it's yeah. my friend. I like to look up upside down. I just like the lefty on the righty. I always, yeah. I've always dug. All right, so so that. That telly is, so the thing about, I, I own no production Tyler guitars, uh -huh. sadly. I'm still, I'm in the midst of trying to figure out, you know, it's all priorities, you know, and <laughs> because I've got, you know, a bevy of guitars, yeah. you know, a new one's not a priority, but yeah. You know, I still have a list longer than the list of guitars I own. Yeah, right. So, yeah. yeah, there's never enough. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, but I do not own any current production Tyler models. Okay. Um, but I've, I own five or six that I built during my tenure. Mm -hmm. They were all one-off prototype things. Like I own that Explorer that I built while yeah. I was with him. And that Tele is one. So that Tele body was originally, um, it, it's basically a Strat and Tele clothing. Mm -hmm. It is routed for a Floyd. It's got three pickups, like a Strat. And um, it was originally intended for Mike Landau in 1987. Okay. And he was, and it was painted black and it was gonna have a maple neck on it and that was it. And so the, uh, anyway, at some point, it just took us so long to build it and things were moving and grooving and whatever, he wound up Passing on it, it's like nah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm over it or whatever. Yeah. So he passed on, on, on it, and it was so it was laying around the shop, and so my friend, so the Yamaha, back to the Yamaha, my buddy who was the guy I was helping with the motor, okay. bought the Yamaha body for me when I took the neck and put it on the Explorer. Uh -huh. So he bought the left-handed Tele neck to put on the Yamaha body, and okay. we were supposed to be doing that. Right. Well, that project was such a back burner thing that it took forever and never got done. So I wound up acquiring the, the I talked to Tyler and I got the, Telly body from him, and I got the Telly neck from yeah, my other buddy, and I bolted it together. <laughs> now the the finish, you said it looks primer. Actually, that is the one of the flagship finishes that Tyler produced. Okay, it's called psychedelic vomit. Yeah, it's got a psychedelic thing going on. For sure. Yeah, but we basically he just shoots a guitar, um, not even the whole guitar. He he'll shoot it like with a. One one color base coat, like maybe black uh -huh. or or silver metal flake mm -hmm. or something, and then he'll take a series of like candy red, uh, candy blue, um, and then uh, what is it? There's blue and there's like three or four colors that he uses, and he doesn't even shoot the whole body. He'll shoot like the upper horn, the lower bout, this and that, and he'll just kind of do like this camouflagey looking metallic. Then he'll shoot another layer of paint over it, like metallic silver, and then he'll do the same thing, but it won't ever be the same on the next layer of blotches. And then he'll shoot. He'll do that like two or three or four times, and then he'll shoot black over the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then it's like looking for geodes. Yeah. You start sanding this guitar and yeah. you, whenever it looks like what you like, you stop. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So no two ever come out alike. Totally, yeah. And it's called Psychedelic Vomit and that was the first way out finish that he did besides one that he does called the Gym Burst. Now a Gym Burst is, um, it's metallic, shot silver, and then if you hung the guitar up, the tips of the horns on a strap are like midnight blue metallic, okay. and they burst into like red, and then the red bursts into magenta, and it just kind of bursts from one end to the other, and wow. it's all translucent over metallic, and it's, he calls it a gem burst. And, um, okay. and that, that gem burst finish came out of a finish I will put, matter of fact, I think I have it on my on my guitar repair website. Um, 
So talk about, this, this brings up a whole other topic too. <laughs> but um, it's a, uh, it's called, um, a friend of mine had a 62 Strat and this was back in like 1980. So a 62 Strat in 1980 was not, wasn't really considered like the vintage guitar craze now where you're yeah. paying $450,000 for a 59 it's Les Paul right. wasn't happening then. Yeah. Anyway, he had an old 62 Les uh, Strat and he had a, he wanted this outer space theme. So Jim came up with this outer space theme where it's dark space midnight blue with these sun rays and it's very very looks something like star wars it's okay. a very groovy yeah. paint job and that was the first thing he's never done another one like it but that was the birthplace of the gym burst okay came out of that finish and i've got a picture of that guitar on my website because i reconnected with that friend after like 30 years at the yeah, nam yeah. show a couple of years back <laughs> and uh he's like you gotta set my guitar up it's dying so um but uh where were we? What were we talking? We were about? talking about the upside down. Oh yeah, so telly neck yeah, on so, the body. So. so anyway, so that's where that came from. So, um, so I've got that, and uh, it was already routed for Floyd. So I put a Floyd on it, and it's got um, it's got Duncan's in it. It's got a uh, a telly hot rail at the bridge, and a Duncan classic uh, stack in the middle, and a hot stack at the neck. It's a killer looking guitar. Oh, it plays yeah. like it's just it's it's. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the it's the kind. So why are you such a strat guy? Ergonomically, uh -huh. I, they just fit. They flow. Uh -huh. You know, I can get away with twenty one frets, but my favorite is a, a twenty two fret neck. I'm not a huge twenty four fret neck guy um, because people say, "Man, those are long necks." They are, but they're long towards the bridge. They're not long towards the headstock. They're not. Yeah. They don't stick out farther. Yeah. What they do is they actually move your neck pickup closer to the bridge. Okay. And personally, like some of my guitars don't even have tone controls in them. They're one knob volume. Right. My tone control is my pickup selector switch. Sure. And, and your so, fingers. And your fingers, yeah. yeah. But um, <laughs> most of the time, I, to me, I find a greater value in having my neck pickup in the sonic dynamic range mm -hmm. with the neck pickup closer to the headstock by an inch mm -hmm. than I find by playing two extra frets worth of notes. Okay. I get more bang for my buck personally having the sonic placement of the pickup. So, 20, so 21 frets, you know, all the good keys you need that 22nd fret for comfortably. Yeah. I mean, on my 21 fret note, next, sometimes I actually play the fretboard where the 22nd fret would be right. and coax just I will a note out yeah, of that right, yeah. place, yeah. you know, if I really really need it or I'll transpose yeah. it down an octave or do crazy creative stuff to get right. away with 21 to frets, it, but yeah. but strats, man, they're just ergonomically they just flow, they feel, they're right. You know, uh, they've got the rib cut out and the contours right. and they just and they're articulate. I mean I mean, the greats, Hendrix, played a strat. There's pictures of him with flying V's yeah. and other things, but yeah. you know what well, he played what, lots of stuff in the studio. Yeah, but but, but live he was always the strat. Always a strat. You guy. could always get yeah. it out of a strat. You know, sure. Blackmore, Trower. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I like being the strat guy because you know I played a lot of uh, heavy music for a long. I mean, at heart, Tyler. Tyler is the guy. When I was learning to play, I was, like I said, I was like 16 when I met him and I was still new at playing. Mm -hmm. He's like, you wanna really learn to play guitar? And I'm like, yeah, and he gives me a cassette tape. He comes back to work like the day after with this cassette tape. And on the front of it was John Mayall's Beano album. And on the back was Fresh Cream. Okay. And he goes, if you can play this stuff, you're a guitar player. Yeah. And so I learned, I mean, I love the blues, but I really love the blues after that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. the blues is just one of those things. It's kind of like lead in your system. It just never goes away. It's yeah. a, and it's accumulative. The yeah, more you yeah. listen to the blues, the deeper it starts to intertwine your DNA. Oh, yeah. And so I can never get rid of it. So everything I do has an essence of the blues in it, sure. even if I'm playing metal or yeah. funk or anything. And right. most of those are if you just keep going backwards and deconstruct yeah. them, it came from the blues anyway. Right. So, so, um, but strats, you know, I just, I always find my place in the mix easier with a strat. Yeah, well, um, it makes sense. I mean, like there's, 
the classic combo of being in two guitars. Right. You're going to have a humbucker and you're going to have single chord. There's, well, yeah, you can cut. You know, you, the, the difference you, can. You should, sure, in my opinion. I mean, unless you're like a three guitar band, yeah. like Skinner or you yeah. know all the old right. southern rock bands, or these days Iron yeah. Maiden. Um, I think I think it just is a really good compliment to yeah. have a, a Les Paul and a, yeah. a, a Telly or a Strat yeah, or right. something. It's just always been interesting to me that there. It feels like there are more players out there that are either one or the other than right. there are the universal guy right. that like kind of like but I'm glad off, for that you know? too you know it's like Slash wouldn't be him I don't think without a Les Paul yeah right you know he's yeah. just Angus it, wouldn't be Angus without, without the, the SG, SG or right. whatever you know you like, know there's it's just yeah. it's like it's, be, it's beautiful that, that, that that's what it is you know yeah. when you think of I mean when you start if, if let's let's identify guitars by players if I said George Harrison what do you think Gretsch. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, though he played the telly yeah. and everything, I still, Gretsch is the yeah. big go-to yeah, guitar yeah, yeah, when yeah. you hear that, you know? Yeah. Um, and like, you know, Chet Atkins, you think Gretsch. Yeah. You know, uh, Roy Clark, you think um, like 335 or yeah. Gibson Jumbo, you know right. what I'm saying? Larry Carlton, 335. Yeah. You know, these guitars just, you know, these guys found their thing. They found Rit it. Yeah. Rittenauer, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, you think of Lukather for years. He was playing those Valley Arts guitars. Yeah. Now he's got the the Ernie Balls, but you know it's still the HSS layout. Yeah, for, I mean, some kind of change, yeah. but yeah, yeah, for sure. There's yeah. some change, and, and and you know they're trying to stretch their thing too. But they found yeah. their voice. Yeah, they found their voice. So yeah, I can play yeah. anything. Yeah, but you know. No, I just I, I found it interesting. I was like, as I was kind of looking at some of your Facebook photos and stuff, I go, so he's a Strat guy. I could, that's pretty obvious, you know. Go through. It. I'll but ask I have, him about that. But I, but I have some other stuff that, that yeah, I, saw I like bring brown, up. Well, what was that brown one that was like almost like a? That is a Giffen, G I F F E N. Okay. There's a there's a builder named Roger Giffen, and um, what's. Not Volcree, that's not the Volcree. Um, there was a funky blue guitar in there that you had. That too. was one of my creations from Tyler. That was okay. a prototype. And I'm actually working at revision two of that. I've uh -huh. got it right now. That guitar was a, um, a Charvel. A, a, it happened to be mahogany, but it was a single humbucker routed for a, a Trem Van Halen guitar okay. body from yeah. Charvel. But it happened to be made out of mahogany. Yeah. Um, and I just, if you take a strat, when it comes in at the waist, yeah. if you just follow that waistline straight to where the neck joins on, I just bandsawed off the horns. Okay. That's yeah. what I did. Oh, that and makes then, sense now. So it's kind of a tear, yeah, I call it my tear yeah, top. Right, yeah. And then the neck, I got a, it was a fretboard on a piece of maple, and it had been the neck and the, where it goes into the neck pocket were shaped but it was completely square it was just cut out from the sides and then it had a big square piece of wood for a headstock okay and i made that headstock that you see it yeah it, it, it's four and two yeah before ernie ball even did four and okay. two i mean i did that right. in 1982 or three okay i built that headstock that's cool and uh so it's really cool. It's a, it's a it's a very comfortable guitar to play. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Um, the thing about it is it, it's not it's like a flying V. You can't sit okay. very well and play that it because it's just there's no yeah, there's right. no waist on the there's bottom no end. To it. Yeah. So yeah. my new one looks just like it, um, but I have a, I'm I'm waiting to get it finished. It's all sanded out and ready to go. And I actually just thirty some odd years later just did it like about a month ago I'm just waiting to take it to get it sprayed but it's imagine kind of like a Les Paul horn on the oh, bottom of it okay other than that it's the same that's cool um, that one's got three pickups um, but the one that I made only has two it's got a hum and then a single at the neck with nothing okay. in the middle um, tell me about uh, tell me about the group that you play with or who you're playing with now and so um, I was I have a band or had a band called Froghead for about 10 years when I was uh, up in, here in town? Yeah, well, okay. before I, when I was in Vista. Okay. I've only been in Temecula two years, so okay. this is 2018. Okay. So we moved up here in June, July of 2016. Okay. As, as resident. Right. So here's the story. Um, I moved to Vista from LA and took some time off from music to be a husband and a father and learn how to do that and um, work for my folks. And then 
When that ended, I picked up the guitars again and started playing and was doing some hired gun stuff, doing some stuff in, in church and just whatever I could get my hands on to play. Started my own band um, in 2006 and um, it was called Froghead. It was kind of a heavy, heavy rock. We played, we tuned a whole step down or sometimes drop C and it was kind of for lack of a better definition, it was kind of had some Alice in Chainsy Guns and Roses heaviness, okay. rock, yeah. little, little sludgy at times. Yeah. Um, we borrowed elements of like Black Album Metallica, and um, I'm a huge King's X fan. Okay. So, you like Doug. Oh, Doug and yeah. Ty, those guys. Yeah. When I, yeah. So, if you, it's kind of an amalgam. It's, I didn't want to be heavy in, like, some of the Swedish death metal stuff to me, I almost find a chuckle. Okay. Because it's just, it's it's like, it's just too contrived. Yeah. It's it like, is. You, yeah. How, how low, how many strings below <laughs> can you yeah. have? On, like, nine string guitars and different, you know, it's like yeah, all right. the, yeah, and, yeah. you know, triple rectifier ran into a quadruple rectified yeah. amp you know and just gained yeah. beyond recognition and totally. it's just it just to me it's a little bit more contrived yeah you know king's x to me is ultra heavy yeah extremely content uh, harmonic content yeah. of a high caliber a amazing harmonies yeah. and background vocals have you, by the way have you heard him being involved with the mc50 thing Yes, he oh, he's not there anymore. He's not in it. No, he bowed out. He said he, he, they were just on their way to Europe. I'm good friends with Doug. Oh, okay. I, I built awesome. him. Yeah, I built him a base uh, that um, he's he's licensed with Schechter, so I don't think okay. he can play it out. But he's got it in his private arsenal. See, I didn't even. I never knew about those guys. I this is my band. I'm uh -huh. a huge Pearl Jam guy. Okay. And Eddie used to always be, you know, he this is Doug from King's X. Come on out, Doug, and you right. have Doug come out and do like a song. Well, Doug is ultra social, man. Doug yeah. is Doug is Doug. I, I never knew who they were. The greatest were. cat in the world. Their man. music is cool, man. I mean, I got into them because of Pearl Jam. That's the only reason why I stumbled right. upon them was. If Eddie vouches for him, then I gotta check anything that he would vouch for. I go check out, you right? know. And I got into, I mean, yeah, dude, for sure. Kings. Well, the I first, was, especially they're awesome. You know, everything. They're they are to me like ZZ Top. Like if you listen to ZZ Top, and then you know the '80s stuff that they did with all the loop drums and everything. Uh -huh. Those guys brilliantly stayed relevant yet true yeah. to who they are right. through the changing of the tides of the 80s when the electronica was going on you know they yeah. were compete with gary newman and, yeah. and, and and you know terry nunn in berlin right and you know yeah. uh, uh uh duran duran and all of those yeah. type of bands but they still had their stamp absolutely yeah, they still sure. were bluesy totally and they had yeah. you know great simplified yeah. they, all of it was heart and soul i mean it was great they did great yeah king's x is another band that has been able to retain who they are and through that so if you start in chronological order of their catalog you okay. will just follow their evolution and they're freaking amazing yeah yeah but when i heard them i heard my sound because i loved heavy but i didn't necessarily want to be dark and evil and well, ominous melodic like, heavy yeah you know i mean it was heavy yet uplifting yeah, it was like right. how could a drop tune c riff that's just you know but then you lay Ty's guitars in there and he's brilliant. Yeah. He's he to me is it's it's like if you're looking at melodic guitar players, it's like Ty and David Gilmore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Who tops David Gilmore in melodic guitar playing? You know, I yeah. don't know anybody that does. Right. You know, but Tough. Ty. Yeah. So Ty he's is there in the running. Yeah, he is a badass. <laughs> and um, so so that was kind of our band. And then um, and I worked that and our last gig was uh, like July of 2014. Okay. I finally got to a point where um, a band is tough to do. Yeah. You know, if, right. if, if, you're, if, if you're not all on the same page, if you don't have the same level of ded dedication and the same reason for playing. Right. And it was really tough yeah. to find. And those things after being a band that long can shift and change. Well, right? yeah, because people grow and their yeah. needs change and whatnot. And right. I mean, I played with a bunch of wonderful cats, um, all good at what they did. But, um, you know, like like my, the, the, the last bass player and singer that I had in that band are working together in a cover band. Okay. And they're working their butts off and they're digging it. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, 
that was probably what they were geared for and was their desire to play more so because the original when you're playing originals you're a, you're a showcase band sure. you're one of like three or five others on the bill yeah. and you're getting a half an hour to an hour yeah. to play and totally. you're set up and you're tear down yeah. and it's you know yeah now they are setting up and they're playing for four hours. Yeah, and they're, you know, it's four hours. Exactly. Yeah. And they're making a whole lot more, you know, uh -huh. not get rich money, but they're yeah. making more money than a showcase. For sure. Showcase bands pay to play. They're actually yeah. getting paid a hundred bucks a guy or whatever totally. it is to, yeah, to, yeah. To, to do it. So, so they're, they're happier than clams now, man. Yeah. They're, they're digging it. And I just, but it wasn't what I was going to, uh, what I was envisioning for, mm. for Froghead. And Froghead was primarily my 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 thing and i was totally open to having um sharing the dream and sharing whatever pie might or de be derived by the efforts yeah but you know but i had to be the captain of the ship and yeah and that's the tough position there's a yeah. lot of responsibility in that as well well I mean, and after honestly after 10 years it was one of those things where like i was Exhaust like the marrow of my bones was tired. Yeah, it's like I was young and energetic, and yeah. I just it's like I just I I, I just ran out of there's nothing in the there's tank no anymore. Yeah, so I you know I just said guys, hiatus, time out, you know mm -hmm. maybe permanent. I don't know what the story right. is, but I'm I, I'm done. Yeah, and I still it wasn't like I was like couldn't get out of bed tired, but yeah, I was no, just no, no. tired. So yeah, um, and that was 2014, and so at that point I put myself on the market back as a hired gun because mm -hmm. I didn't want to languish in irrelevance because you got to stay, like you said, you got to stay on a stage totally. to keep that headspace and that, yeah. that mojo keep playing. and keep your talent for accessing those sure. things alive. Yeah. So I hired myself. You don't myself. use it, you lose it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one, I tell my students all the time, playing guitar is a perishable skill. Mm -hmm. Very perishable. I mean, I've been playing for four years. If I went on vacation and left my guitar at home and I was just like two weeks without it, God, the effort to knock the rust off is <laughs> astronomical. Yeah, sure. It is more prudent for me yeah. to play every day and take and to drag a guitar on vacation with me yeah. and play than it is for me to give my wife wholly my undevoted attention. Yeah. Which I wouldn't mind doing, but yeah. I can't. Yeah. I can't. It yeah. just doesn't and she God bless her. Yeah. She knows. Yeah, right. She knows. She's like she's the one that like, I'll be sitting around and go, You wanna watch some television? She'll go, Did you practice? And I'm like, No. Yeah. She goes, You give you give me you give me forty five minutes or an hour on the guitar and I'll let you watch television. It's like, Yes mom. Yeah, right. But that That's I mean awesome. I am in love with a woman yeah, like that. Good man. For you. So yeah. she's yeah, she treats me good. Yeah. I can relate only to the fact that me and my wife now, not at the time, lived up in Tahoe for like eight years. And man, I had my room, I had my setup, I had all my stuff. I played, got into, you know, demoing and recording all my, I mean, I had books and books of songs and I was just like, okay, I was focused on trying to like maybe capture, I don't, I don't want to die with all these songs in a book with like an AGC chord progression and no one knows so how it goes. That's right, at least just demoing and cataloging everything. That was like where I was at with that. But I was playing every day all the time. All my guitars were getting rotated. I was everything was getting love. Right. You know? Um okay, you bring up another topic. Three three year three three year old now, three years ago, baby come, you know, we you go on our honeymoon, we get pregnant. Boy, has everything changed. And now I got the twin, I got two twin girls that are three months old now. Wow. Congratulations, though. I mean, the playing has it goes, diminished, it goes by fast. my friend. I mean, but it's just, it's a different chapter. Well, my right young, now, my youngest you know? is 21, and, you know, they grew up with me playing a yeah. lot. And so, yeah. Um, it, it just, it, it's a way of life. Yeah. It's I, like anything I, else. I, I, I mean, it's just, I just, I don't necessarily have the, the 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 support yeah, you know right. well, you, know, um, no, you, you might not be able to you know what there's a season for everything though. there is as yeah. long I'm in Navy land right now so yeah. I just you know it is so it you is. know what don't begrudge it I don't soak it up and yeah. immerse yourself in it yeah. because it will I know the tide will turn the, and the, the investment will, the know. investment that you will put into those children by immersing yourself in them now yeah. will go for the that will be something that won't go to the grave with you yeah. it will transcend you right. and keep going yeah. and is you know but I'm sure you can carve out a few minutes here and there on a consistent basis not to totally lose your chops yeah you, you, right. you, know, you can play here, you can play there, yeah. and if they grow up with you doing that, then it'll be a normal part yeah, of their Yeah, and that's what I want. That's why I was really uh, hearing from you that I was like going, I want 
I'm done. You know, yeah. I want my yeah. kids to see that it's there. I'm playing. It's part of me. It's part of us. It's part of them. It's part of the family. You know, right? But we're, like we were talking about earlier, um, the wave of like I, with the with 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 what's going on, um, just commercially, not. But with computers and technology and stuff, it's changed the way a lot of people are thinking about music and what they're hearing. And a lot of the kids, like I played a gig last night at the Star Theater down in Oceanside. It was a jazz gig, and um, they, I was just talking with the cats that I was playing with. I got called last minute. I got called yesterday at 11 a.m. to play a 6 p.m. gig. Okay. And um, and uh, we were talking afterwards, and it was like, man, you know, these cats were, you know, older than me. And they're like, you know, some of the kids these days, if their parents love them enough to expose them to some of this old stuff, yeah, you know, when it was like real, I mean, someone really was playing the music and it was really going down in the studio like you heard it on the recording because yeah. editing was not what it is no, today. it was all live then. Right, yeah, yeah you know, and, and if they catch fire with that, you know, and there's a few people that are still out there swinging, trying to do it. But, you know, yeah. commercially speaking, you know, it's been, you know, how much money can we make for the least amount of effort? Totally. And how much can we pull over on, you know, it's, it's like if we tell all these little teeny boppers that this is good music, they'll believe it and then they'll buy it. Yeah. You know, and you and I know both know that there is way more heart and soul available if they just dig it up but yeah. they don't know where to dig because they have not had any instruction like listen to this what's yeah. that it's a record yeah <laughs> can i get that on my yeah. on my phone <laughs> you know? well maybe yeah look honey, here's yeah. the name of it look it up see if yeah. you can find it if not come over i'll burn i'll yeah i'll record it i actually it. have a record player that has a usb that can hook into yeah. my computer where i can burn Albums Records. to somebody yeah. for an and it's still gonna have that sound, the crinkle to it, and everything. Yeah. You know, that's great. Yeah, that's great. But but, but ro talking about rotating guitars. Yeah. You know, um, my, my wife. Um, I do try to rotate guitars. Um, I've gone through a large uh, amount of what I have now and brought them back up. You know, re reset them up for 440 because that's what I'm working in mm -hmm. right now. But um, some of them are still set up for whole step down because when I try to write and still keep some of the juices going, because I got a catalog of stuff that I haven't recorded yet. Yeah. And that's just it. Uh, you know, you mentioned a moment ago that you wanted yeah. to record it. Cataloging. Yeah. yeah. I've got decades worth of music, and I've always, my, my thought was this I want to be a great guitar player and a songwriter, and, you know, and singer if I can be. Uh, but I don't. I don't. I don't have aspirations to be like the world's greatest recording engineer yeah. or the world's greatest multi instrumentalist. Yeah. So I figured if I could get good at guitar, I'd be satisfied with that. Right. So if I have time to do something, I'd rather practice or gig or play or mm -hmm. write. I don't want to sit and learn how to use all that gear because then I'm not playing. Yeah. You know, time's got to come from somewhere, and totally. I only got a little bit of it. Yeah. But, you know, I, it got to the point now where it's like, you know, if I don't get after recording this, because I've never had the money to actually go in and have an engineer do the recording for me. Right. So about a year and a half ago, I bought the bullet. Long story short is I've got recording equipment. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, even I'm, just home I'm home. learning. Yeah. How do I, well, I got some good stuff, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm, but I mean, just cataloging it, like you say, it's not sitting in a book, you don't have stacks of songs. At least someone can Somebody, hear it. Maybe your son, you know, like I say, maybe my son someday will start playing and he'll he'll go through dad's stuff and have, have a blueprint with the songs and the lyrics and have a demo version he can listen to. Maybe he'll take it to the next limit or level. Exactly. Or, yeah. You know, he'll have something to start with, and that would blow my mind to hear yeah, my but, kids but, but even on a demo play version, my songs, you know? But even at a demo level of the tune, he'll ha he'll hear your heart come through, and he'll sure. go, this is what my old man was about. For sure. Yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah. 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 This is what he was thinking yeah, about. Because, this I mean, I don't want to be dead and them going through my books and going, I uh, wonder what these songs sounded like. Right. You know, God, what did these sound like? That's, what were the, that's what was the intention of these things? You know, I mean, the lyrics sound really cool, and the how, I see well, that there's a how, chord what the melody. There. What was the melody? What was the melody? You right. know. Yeah. So for sure, I mean, just just even if it's an acoustic vocal version of some of these songs, right? It's just having it blueprinted, having a demo version of it. I'm not looking like you say have the best recorded engineered version of of it right it's just capturing the moment capturing right. what the essence of what it is for whoever 
may come along, you know? Exactly. So Exactly. So, um, talking about guitars, so, like, 20, 30 years ago, God, my kids were just babies. Um, I, I mean, I love Harleys, but I don't own one. Um, I was thinking about getting one, and my wife, you know, my wife is the best. She's like, sweetie, she's like, you know I love motorcycles as much as anybody, but you know, and I trust you, but I don't trust half the idiots on the road. Sure. So she's like, and we got young kids, and a lot of them, and I just can't even fathom life without you. So she says, if you could forego the Harley, I won't have an issue with your gear. That will be my thing. You can just, and, and, and she already sells, she's, you know, and I'm not like, I don't spend like, you know, I don't have like a, a I, I'm addicted. It's a never ending thing. thing. But it's, sure, but it's, but I mean, like, know. I don't go max out credit cards totally. buying gear yeah, you're not, or you're doing not stupid yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and a lot of stuff just finds me like lost puppies, man. It, it followed me home. Can yeah. I keep it? Right. But, but, um, so, so she's really cool about, about my gear. And she, but she tells me all the time, I'll be like, hun. And she goes, well, do you need anything? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I, there's a couple things I've been wanting and I could use, but it's like, I mean, I could live without it too, you know? And she's, yeah, like, right. she's like, well, she goes, so-and-so's husband spends more on green fees playing golf. And he's not even like a golf pro. He yeah, just right. plays for a hobby. It, way more at the club, the country club, than you ever spend on gear. Go ahead and buy, you know, that microphone you need or something. Yeah, I'm right. like, wow, did I tell you that I love you? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then the other thing is I do um, try and play all my guitars. Right. Um, the thing is, like, when you're playing original music, your catalog's real small. Yeah. You know, because you're writing it as you go. But, um, and you're playing the same stuff over and over again. So rotating through guitar. See, for, first of all, when I go to shows, like an Aerosmith show, Joe Perry sometimes will use two guitars in one song. Right. I mean, he's changing guitars totally. every song. It's a yeah. new guitar. Yeah. That, you know what, that's why I paid all that money for that ticket. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's part of the show. Part of the so show. So when I play, even at the local level, and I don't do this to be arrogant, but you know what, people, People love Marvel comics and they love superheroes and they want people, the regular, I'm a regular guy, yeah. but if I'm going to occupy a stage, a stage is reserved for that, for even for that moment, just for some sort of entity that's a little bit larger than life because sure. the people that you know, slave all week and want to go let their hair down at a yeah. club on Friday night. Five dollars or a hundred dollars. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but I got to, I, I need, it's show business. So yeah. I really yeah. want to bring the show to For the sure. show. Yeah. So I wrote to, I bring different guitars because yeah. I get people coming up. I saw you three weeks ago and you had a different guitar. This yeah. is really cool. What is it? You yeah, know, right. you totally. make friends talking yeah. about oh, gear yeah. like that. So yeah. I, and, and, and my wife says, if you got, if you own them, you got to play them. Yeah. I'm like, okay, hon, yeah. I'll play them. So, but some of my, I haven't brought them, like in this particular band, because you did ask what, yeah. what, what I'm doing. Right. Um, so I hired myself out from 2014 until current, just doing, you know, one-off gigs and stuff. And um, I got hired by a gentleman, local cat, John Demps. Amazing, amazing, amazing vocalist. I mean, can sing virtually everything well, nice. very well. And, uh, but, that's not even the good part. The good part is he's really a nice guy. <laughs> I don't know. Rare. Many, rare. I mean, he's like really a nice guy. And he doesn't panic. Like we've had PA malfunctions in the middle of shows and he doesn't like. Throw a fit. The audience yeah. would never, never know. know. I mean, except for they could tell something's going on. Well, yeah. But he's really calm. Yeah. Hey, we're working through a bug here. Yeah. So I'm going to let my bass player do a solo while I work this out. Is that cool? There's a professional uh, that comes that guy, that right he, there, yeah. he is he is just, he is so easy to work with. Yeah. And he's respectful. I mean, like, he, he won't curse from stage at all. You know, like we're playing, um, we're playing Bruno Mars Chunky. Yeah. And there's a line in that song, if you're going to party, take your ass back home. Yeah. He won't say that. Yeah. If, if you ain't here to party, take yourself back home. <laughs> He's yeah. just, it, I mean, he... Does and it he, with ease. He, yeah. he is, he's a good cat. Yeah. And it, it's like, 
I got. I don't want to go anywhere else. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, I I get called once in a while, and I'm really selective about what I sure. do over and above it. And he's been working really, really hard to solidify a band because, like, in the hired gun game, you know, it's kind of like the phone rings. You know, someone someone gets a gig, they'll book gigs with no band, and then they'll call around until they get a band and they'll throw it together. It's kind mm -hmm. of like going, you know, it's like a pickup game of basketball down at the Y. Yeah. You know. And yeah, with Hunter and Anthony, uh, I kept. Now I'm hearing about the six string society thing. Right. Not, I, I, have you heard of that? Or yeah, I've, I've I've heard of it. Okay. Um, there's a promoter, Ken Rexroad. Okay. That um, I believe is. Uh, a big piece or is that okay. Six String, String yeah. Society? I never heard of it until, until I started interviewing these other cats. And yeah. did so. you get? A, did you get uh, Anthony? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice kid, huh? Totally a great guy. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. I've not met Hunter. Like I know who he is, but I've not like shook his hand. But yeah. But Anthony and I know each other. Anthony yeah. is a great cat. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I have Darren Greatly actually going to be doing them in September, which will be really cool. Awesome. So awesome. You know, a lot yeah, there's of the so many guys, guys that I, I don't know. know, like I know of them because yeah. everybody's working hard with the PR, right. but I don't know them all yeah. yet. But yeah, I look forward to meeting everybody. And I try to get out and support when I can. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. usually in the woodshed. You know, like yeah. like the last year and a half, I've been trying to learn how to become a recording engineer. Yeah. I got three. I've got three songs down, and they just you know the engineering gets a little better each time I yeah. I, I, I track one. Right. But um, yeah, that's. That comes with so. it for sure. So, uh, with the band that you're you're playing with, this guy is this a local, more of a local Temecula thing, or you guys kind of branch well, out San Diego he, or whatever? You know, the reason I moved to Temecula was, you know, I mean, moving from LA to Vista was culture shock. I mean, it took me, a, it took me five years to even f find a music scene. Yeah. You know, and uh, when I did, it was like. God, it was like almost like underground because it was just so sparse. There was like yeah. next to nowhere to play. The Coyote Cafe in Carlsbad and a couple other venues. You know, uh, the City of Vista was really, really tight on their venue, mm -hmm. the cabaret licensing. So um, I discovered Temecula in 2014. And that's about the same time I put myself out as a hired gun because right. I got called for a date. It was out here. And man, the, the city ordinances are much more friendly to establishments for allowing that. For sure. My, what, I, what I have noticed, though, is, and this is an interesting thing, and we can start talking business dynamics from that standpoint for another hour and a half, right. I'm sure. But um, with the favorable light in which the city regulators appear, I don't have facts for everything, yeah. so right. I'm not... You know, I, I'm, I'm speculating, yeah. mother, but from what it appears to me that they are, are pretty favorable towards, you know, the uh, entertainment factor at an establishment mm -hmm. because it's happening everywhere. And I can't yeah. imagine everybody's doing it under the radar because totally. there'd be a lot of problems that I've not heard of. Yeah. So, um, but when you go into a lot of these establishments, I mean, there's everything from a DJ or a solo guitar player up to full bands mm -hmm. and everything in between, duos, trios, you know, quartets, whatever. Totally. Um, it's all it's over the place. Yeah. 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 And it's great. Yeah. It's great because kids are, you know, families are, you know, parents are taking kids out to dinner and they're getting exposed to live performance, which yeah. is better yeah. than just hearing it coming over the house speakers and the yeah. ceiling or whatever. Right. But few of the establishments, like when you go see bands at these places, it is clear as day that we slid a couple tables out of the way and we're cramming the band in this corner. Totally. If they were to actually construct, yeah. why, if you're, if it's okay to have the band there, why is it not okay to, when you're, when you, when you lease a building and it's gutted out empty and you're going to build it up for your restaurant, why is it not, why don't you just put a band area designated yeah. so you've got a band stand? Yeah. It seems and, like it came secondary. Yeah, like yeah, it, it was an were, afterthought or something. Let's start the restaurant and then like, oh, well, there's lots of music going on here. Well, let's, yeah, let's add music. I want you know? that too, yeah, right. right. I want that music too. So totally. it's like if they were, yeah. um, we play a lot. Um, there's a place, uh, so, so anyway, I work with uh, John Demps. And his name, uh, the band's John Demp's Possessive, John Demp's Full Effect okay. is the name of the band. So um, I'm just, John's a good friend and I do what I can to support him. Sure. It's, his, it's his baby. Yeah. I don't, you know, hold the reins. I, yeah, yeah. you know, 
Yeah. I do my part, you right. know. I hustle technology and do set up and tear down and make sure the guitar parts are where they're supposed to be. Totally. But um, but uh, he does the managing and the booking and everything For like sure. that. And yeah, you know, there's just so much to work local. Acres of Diamonds. Yeah. There's so much to work locally yeah. that you know if we don't have to travel far, we don't yeah. travel far. Between the strip here and even the wineries, I yeah. mean, you you really could just work this circuit alone yeah. and. But but it's we're not we're not you know again if the money's right and everything sure. you know we'll do what needs to be done yeah. wherever it needs to be Go done wherever, yeah. you know but we're starting to get a lot I mean we're we are a fun party band we do like everything from seventies to current um, you know yeah fun music dance totally. music we yeah. throw in a couple of rock songs we do some Journey uh, Guns and Roses you know um, but. There's been some personnel changes along the way. You know, mm -hmm. I'm probably at at this current. I wasn't the first guitar player that that was in the band, but I've been there the longest now, okay. and uh, we've got a crew of people that seem to be committed uh, to 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 doing it because it takes sure. a long t to get to the level that you want to get where you can hire yourself out and ask for the money you want for yeah. corporate and stuff like that you really got to have game yeah and that doesn't come with a pickup you know like a sub with with a band full of subs you yeah. know it doesn't happen no so we've yeah. got a pretty consistent team and so we're you know getting back in i mean john and i've got you know a couple hundred song repertoire yeah right. but you know we're working the same 40 songs 50 sure. songs with the guys we got now till we get this yeah. nucleus going but uh, anyway so when john put this band together like three three and a half years ago um in marietta there's a place called franklin's cove mm -hmm. franklin's cove used to be another club okay well when frank and his wife tammy uh, frank hallberg and his wife tammy took the place over it had a little stage like two by eights on edge and plywood, you know, that had yeah. some carpet over it. But it was, there was room for a drum set, a bass amp and a guitar amp, but the singer, guitar player and bass player had to stand on the floor. Okay. And the drum set and the right. gear could sit on the stage. Yeah, That's how right. small it was. Yeah. Or a solo guitar player on a bar stool could be okay. Uh -huh. And so they tore that out and reconfigured their room and built a big 12 by 16 stage that's 18 inches off the ground, okay. put a light truss up and made a dedicated place, put a dance floor. And it's probably the nicest room that I've played in this area. Area, yeah. I mean, it's big. Um, Frank, for for a, a sports bar club establishment, mm. has probably the best quality cuisine. It's not like you know, it's not like going to A M P M for a super dog or something <laughs> like that. I mean, it's it's like. I can I can actually eat there and not yeah. get indigestion in the middle of the set. Right, it's good yeah. food, yeah. Um, and so it's just great. It's yeah. great, and he loves. He's a music lover, so it's a, it's a great room to play. So John helped put that. I mean, we were playing there six and eight times a month, and we helped put that place on the on the map. And now awesome. it's like all the local bands are. Yeah, you know, I just saw Homie Blues that was over oh, there, yeah. and. Uh, the tones and a bunch of bands that yeah. I follow, and yeah, that was yeah. That was but John cool. was instrumental in in you know blowing the roof off of that place and 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 opening it up, and you know now cool. now now Frank's got a line a mile long of bands yeah. that want to play there. That's uh that's right there by the hospital, right? Uh, like yeah, Richie's yeah. Diner and all that. Richie's kind of, Diner, yeah. and it's like if you because there's only there's only stuff on the north side yeah. of the street. So yeah, yeah. when you turn in if if you if you turn in off of Mary to Hot Springs. Starbucks is on your left, okay. Richie's on your right. Yeah. You're looking right at the club. Okay. As soon as you turn in right, the driveway, yeah. if you just kept driving, you'd drive right in the front door. Cool. So, great place. Matter of fact, uh, and I just got noticed right before I came for the interview with you, mm -hmm. um, John called me and we just got added this coming Friday night at Bailey's. Oh, okay, cool. So, we'll be at Bailey's, then we've got Thornton Winery coming up. Uh, we're usually once a month throughout the season yeah. at Bailey's right. but they added us another night this yeah. month because we yeah, just the played Bailey them. brothers were just in over at Pete's the other day saying you know we're looking for acts for winter we're gonna start booking for winter and stuff coming up so you know it's blah 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 we've not done any winters there mm -hmm. because you know they closed the patio down and it's right. indoors and that's what I was wondering do they, they do indoor stuff or how do they well, do that in, their indoor stage is literally about the size of a postage stamp. Okay. Like a DJ sets up in yeah, there, right? You know, and he yeah. can set his little table and mixer. Yeah, I think that's it was it. more like acoustic stuff is what they were looking for. I think for. so. Yeah, but you know. But uh, yeah, but so 
tell me about your tell me about your shop, your store. I know it's over there. So, kind of by the boiler room. Is that is that right? I am directly. All right. So uh, I'm in the same building that Guadalajara Mexican Restaurant okay. is in. Yeah. And that you know Jefferson runs north and south, and the so the building's a long skinny building that runs north and south. Right. Guadalajara is on the north end, and since they've been there forever, yeah. You know, if you navved my address yeah nav will take you to their parking to their lot thing. but there's a south parking lot a smaller one on mm -hmm. the end and uh i'm closer to that and you know i'm a guitar player but uh and this brings me one of the topics i was hoping we might get to today in this interview was just you know musicians wages and 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 doing that because it's it's an interesting thing it's it's like a tale as old as time you know the artist seems to get the short end of the stick sure. everywhere but yeah, yeah. but um the uh, but but about my shop you know i like like except for the few and the rare and far and few between are you know i like i don't know a lot of, i know a lot of working musicians that are pros yeah but you know their either their significance work also or, because the average income of like a hundred bucks a gig if i could a uh, hundred bucks a gig is like or less mm -hmm. is average so let's just use easy math hundred bucks a gig if i could sustain 365 days a year i can't you can't live in california no. on 36 five you just can't you can't do it unless you're i mean even renting a hovel of a room yeah. you know and driving you know a 1998 beater sure. car you yeah. still you can't do it no you know, you, I, so so i that's that's a whole nother topic but yeah so i supplement my music with um what i know and love and that's i do guitar stringed instrument repair basically mm -hmm. you know i can dabble in some classical instruments you know cello violin stuff like that but it's not really what i do mm -hmm. um more bass guitar ukulele you know type work um i do i take in amp repair and finish work though i you know i've got a tech that does my heavy lifting on the amp repair uh -huh. and i got a guy that does all my finish work if if someone wants finish work but i can take it in and get the job done yeah um i do a lot of consulting um pedal boards rigs guitars you know a lot of times people i'm looking for da 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 da, da i want this sound this whatever you know i was thinking about buying one of these and that's where you go you want to save some money yeah because you know your your, your in-game definition and this particular piece of equipment are counter opposed to one another totally. you know you don't want this won't help you get that warm sound you're looking for this is gonna make your sound bright or whatever yeah, right right so i do a lot of consulting build pedal boards for people help them with signal path stuff and different things like that yeah so, i so. had sent somebody just recently no you have you have and had I had like a pedal board thing you. that he couldn't figure out i, I wanted to thank you i for said that. you know what go to rob man because he i said that's his forte i know that's something that he can definitely help you i said is this this is beyond me. I yeah. can't help you. I just can't. Right. No. I Thank said I might be able too. to figure it out, but I why? I said I know somebody who will help you for sure. And, and I thank I you for that know. too. It's yeah, like, no worries. I send you know, yeah. I get calls all the time because yeah. I'm not a retail store. Totally. I stock a few yeah. go to items that I know I'll use a lot of, but when people want um, stuff you know it's like yeah. go, go to, you know you're we, the pieces we spread of, the love we spread yeah, the love it's, for it's sure. like yeah. if you need this they're the folks to go yeah. to you need this yeah go go there and yeah. um there's you know, just certain things that we don't and when do. i need one off stuff you know you you know i'm yeah. always on the phone yeah, going, yeah. hey you got any of these yeah right so so that yeah. so that's what i do for the day it's just uh, you can find me online it's just um nino guitar no s just nino guitar n-i-n-o-w guitar mm -hmm. all one word and you guys are open uh, my posted hours are monday through friday mm -hmm. noon to six okay i'm a working musician i mean yeah. i work as hard as i can right if it's slow gigs are on the weekend yeah, that's how it works gigs are yeah. on the weekend yeah. and you know my posted hours are noon but oftentimes i'm in early because i need to get stuff off the bench while the phone's not ringing For sure and I, before i have clients uh, yeah. you know i can't be working at the bench and teaching a lesson at the same time totally so it's by appointment only primarily because i'm a one-man show mm -hmm. and uh lessons you do what only guitar or? guitar bass ukulele okay yeah cool good to know so yeah and uh, I actually have, I even have a drum student, even though I'm not like a real great drummer. Yeah. I can I can get you know you people fumble your way around. I fumble my way around. I can get somebody started with the rudiments, <laughs> and when it, when, they, when they grow beyond me, I hand them off. Yeah, for sure. You know, and yeah. find and find uh, folks that can do what I can't. Yeah, right. So yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, 
But uh, one of the things I was going to say too about we're back on the topic of guitars, sure. um, that when you play, even if you're playing cover music, you mm -hmm. know, unless you have a 700 song catalog and you're making it through that, yeah, no kidding. When you play the same music over and over and over and over and over and over again, um, I find I, I have a blast uh, rotating my guitars because, like. Basically, what I do is it's going to make it interesting for you. For it sure. is because yeah. when you are playing a funk set on a Les Paul, yeah. for example, that is not my go-to funk instrument. No, it's not. But not it, standard. Yeah. it's fun to make it work. To make that it happen. causes yeah. you to think differently. It, yeah. For me, it helps me get by having that heat yeah. of the the. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I'm, I'm not comfortable being out of my comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, breaking out of that mold and, out and of having the, the heat yeah. of that discomfort. Yeah, helps me push into that 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 sweet spot, that yeah. that magic zone that we were talking about. For sure, it keeps me. I am keeps growing comfortable with yeah. being uncomfortable. Right, if that makes yeah, any totally. sense. Yeah, I, you know, it's like yeah. being uncomfortable yeah. doesn't freak me out anymore. Totally. Being uncomfortable is all right. I got this. Well, I mean, it gets to a point where maybe you're going through the motions if you're playing that same strat on that same funk song every day, weeks and weeks and weeks on end, right. you mix it up and all of a sudden you're going, okay, wait a minute. Right. Sounds different, feels different. So, you know, that, that Giffen guitar, it, that know? Giffen, that brown Giffen that you asked me yeah. about, it's got two P90s in it. Okay. You know, yeah. so that's, uh, and that's I've got some other little, I've got some other little custom wiring things that I, that I do to my, to my own guitars for just versatility and, yeah. and points of interest and whatnot. Right. But, uh, you know, when, like, even when I was playing in my band Froghead, it was heavy music, but, uh, you know, to go from a two humbucker guitar to a telly. Mm-hmm. You know, it just drives everything differently. Totally. And I don't, I don't reorganize my sound radically to accommodate. Like I don't yeah. try to make my Sally sound like Les Pauls. So yeah. You know, I don't crank the gain yeah, button right. and the totally. tone controls up. I kind of go, okay, yeah. this is what this is going to be. This is going to have a different sound. You know. Yeah, for sure. Embrace it's like that. if yeah. you were able to follow your favorite band on tour for a year, and let's say you saw three hundred shows. Mm -hmm. And they played the same set virtually every show. Yeah, you're going to see about almost 300 different versions of the same song. Yes, because right. of the energy and just what's going on. The dynamic you know, is going to change for sure every yeah. time. Yeah. One of my fantasies is getting to this the, the place where I, I can be on tour and afford a tech. Yeah, right. Right. And the game I want to play with my tech is here's the set list. I'm going to stand on stage. And you're bringing me the guitars for the songs, uh, and I won't know yeah, what it is. Yeah. He'll and have it ready for you. He'll have it it'll, ready. It'll be set up and ready to go. But tonight, you're gonna know what tonight you're on today. tonight on this yeah. song, he hands me a Strat. <laughs> Tomorrow he hands me, you know, uh, a Les Paul with P90s in yeah, it. Right. The next day he hands me a Telly for yeah. the same song, and it's like, all right, here we go. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, unless there's some signature piece where. You it know, a whammy idea. bar has to be incorporated yeah. in the song. Right. That's like the only criteria. It's yeah. got to be, you know, whether you say hand me a Floyd Rose or a stock yeah. trim, I, you know, yeah. I, I'll need some sort of whammy yeah. on this song, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Or maybe I'll raise the stakes and say hand me a non-trim guitar on a trim song and see what I got to do. <laughs> but that just, I thought that would be just a great way to have a lot of fun, fun yeah. on a, on yeah. a tour. Yeah. So keep you on your toes. For absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So. I, you know, I mentioning uh, that part of it, like, you know, playing for so long, I'm sure that's where things get mixed up for, for guitar players. I mean, they have to mix it up, you know, and like, uh, like I said, I'm a big Pearl Jam guy. And so when they first came out, their lead guy always played strats and their rhythm dude always played Les Pauls. And that was their thing. Right. But over the years, the other dude starts pulling out some strats and the other guy's playing Les Pauls. And then now you're starting to see, you know, SG's getting in the mix and some Les Paul Juniors getting in, you know, and they're and the acoustics and, you know, even the dude, they have a song called Daughter, always an acoustic. Then it was like, for many years, it was a strat with an acoustic simulator, right? you know? And then it was, you know, it's just the, the evolution of over the years seeing those two guys 
switch things up and then the rhythm guy started to play a little bit of leads on some songs and you know it was, it was cool to see that it's, it's well you have to make natural progression you know you're gonna get bored yeah that's you know i'm i'm still finding myself um musically because like in my recording for example i've I've got a decade's worth of songs, and I love music. I mean, I love music. Yeah, your music all genre, lover. All yeah. genres. Right. You know, so I mean, I, I've i got country songs and jazz songs and ballads and pop songs and just dirt, metal, grungy, sludgy. Yeah. I got all kinds of funk stuff. I mean, and I, and I, I want to run, I want to do it all, because yeah. that's who I am. Right. But, you know, I've heard so many people, well, you know, you should pick a genre right. and whatnot, and I'm like, but I'm bigger than genre, you know. Yeah, right. And 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 I read a I read an article, God, some years, eight some odd years back. It was one of the players in Lamb of God, and he was saying, you know, we we started that band in high school. Now we're all almost forty years old, and we've got wives and kids and families, you know. And we, don't get me wrong, because we it's not we don't love Lamb of God, yeah. But we've grown Taste music musically, and our, our yeah. you know we've grown as musicians. So now we can actually play other things besides you know yeah. power chords under yeah. heavy distortion. And, the thing and, that I learned when I was sixteen years old, you know. Exactly, we can and and you know it's like. We have to do side projects and stuff because if we released it under Lamb of God, our fan base would just you know, yeah. shouldn't have kittens, yeah. what the you know. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. so I'm still I'm doing it right now for posterity. Yeah. I'm you know I'm hoping well maybe I can you know like I don't have intentions at the moment. If Brad Paisley or you know Jason Aldean called and said they need a guitar player, I'd be on the road. Oh hell yeah! But but I don't have like aspirations at the moment to like cut a country album or try to go yeah. brand myself as a country artist but I've right. got some what I feel are pretty good country songs Yeah. so it's like alright maybe I can find someone that's in that genre that wants to cover them yeah. you know and get them placed somewhere right. you know yeah. I'm trying to figure out the whole YouTube thing you know I know there are sites where producers scour yeah. for uh, you know stuff for bumpers in mm -hmm. television and independent films and totally. whatnot yeah. you know maybe I can get it placed or something because I, I don't want it to go to waste you know I, everybody's stuff is good but I mean I really try to songwriting is I, I, I think they're I think they're good songs yeah you know right. yeah or if someone goes this is a great this, this is a really good song all we need to do is this, and it'd be a great song. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm all about raising the bar. Totally. But uh, so I'm not exactly sure what to do with it. But in the meantime, my music is serving as a drawing board and a, a, a classroom for me to learn how to become an engineer yeah. and at least get solid demos that I'm not embarrassed about. Totally. You know, more than just I recorded this on my iPhone type of yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and learning production tricks and yeah, whatnot. It's, it's always the greatest thing with music I love and that I, you know, let younger kids know is it's, you're never on top of your game. You're no. always going to learn. Yep. You're never going to stop learning. There's always going to be and there's the always, next level, the next thing. You know, it's, it's ever evolving. Right. It's always changing too. And there's always going to be somebody better than you. Yeah. But that's depending on what. Yeah. You know, right. my thing is like, you know what? Yeah. There might be somebody that shreds guitar better than you yeah if you want to be a shredder then you know if shredding is really your voice yeah because i mean i've like teaching i've had kids come in and they know they're passionate they know that there's just something in life they got to do yeah and they think it's music right and maybe it is so they think it's guitar you know and i've had everybody in my seat i've had kids that are in there because they're excited and i've had kids where it's like my parents said i need to take Making music lessons yeah right and i figured guitar is the least stupid instrument <laughs> so i'll play guitar but i've had kids sitting in there and they're playing guitar and they're playing guitar and they're actually doing pretty good pretty yeah. good right and they'll look up and they'll go you know like bass and ukulele hanging on the wall and after a while they'll go like what's that i'm like well that's a bass guitar yeah. And I pull it off the wall and I go, hold it. Let's yeah. plug it in. You want let, let's just hear, you want it. hear it? Yeah, yeah, you want to hear it? You want yeah. to check it out? And I've had kids switch instruments. I've had kids quit p taking lessons altogether and like become ballet or yeah. karate or skateboarding or BMX yeah. or surf or yeah. whatever it is. And it's like, I don't care what it is. What's your thing? Yeah. What's that thing that like you would sleep with it in bed at night? You know, mm -hmm. your surfboard? Cool. Go, that's go, your calling. That's your calling, man. Yeah, you right. go own it. Go own totally. it. Go make. Go make it 
everything that you can, yeah. you know? And yeah. I'll be here supplying the soundtrack for whatever it is you're doing, right? That's, totally. that's my job, yeah, right. you know? Yeah. <clears throat> but it's, I don't need to browbeat you and hornswoggle you into taking lessons because I need the money that bad. Yeah, right. It's more yeah. about well, how can I help you be yeah. you? And it goes back it, to the happiness <clears throat> thing that actually yeah. we started with this whole thing was is that, you know, I mean, chasing the dollar and chasing the thing or having your parents, you know, what, he, what the, job, the Steve Jobs said, teach your kids, you know, emphasis on what's going to make them happy as opposed to how much money they have to make to set themselves up in life. I right. mean, well, you know, nature can show us a lot. If you like, have you ever seen like when you're sitting having coffee in the morning, and you're looking out your window and the birds are bouncing around the yard in the morning, yeah. chasing worms and whatever. Right. Has any of them looked depressed? <laughs> right. have, have you ever seen any bird that looks like it's going to go postal right. or just it's laying on the ground and yeah. it can't get up because it's just it's depressed. just doing its thing no, it's doing its thing and it's yeah. freaking flitting around you know that, I mean if by body language you can tell they're happy yeah Yet they have no savings accounts, yeah. 401k. They're struggling. They're gotta they have, find their next meal. Yeah, you know? they gotta go out. So, that, man, if you can find joy of just getting up in the morning, and going out and doing what's in front of you, yeah, and being flexible like a surfer, because you don't know if a big set's gonna come in, you don't know if a rogue wave's gonna come through and wash your whole world away. Yeah, you don't know what's coming. Yeah, you know if it's but, gonna be flat or if it's gonna have you know exactly, epic day. Exactly, you, you gotta don't be know. ready for it all. You gotta be ready for it all. So someone comes in with a question man and it's like you know you got a, a split second right there is like you know am I going to help this person out with yeah. my, the resources I have do you steer them left or do you steer them right exactly you know? oh yeah for yeah. sure so it's it's minute by minute you know I told my kids I said I don't know everything but I can tell you this you can't control what happens outside of you all you can control is how you you think but minute by minute you're at the end of your life it's going to be a sum total of the decisions that you make because every decision has a plus and a minus for sure it's got a cha-ching and a cha-ching yeah. you're gonna pay and you're gonna get and you know you don't know everything so with the armed with the greatest amount of information you have at the moment some some decisions you make and then you learn something and yeah, then you right. can you can alter your course and readjust totally. that decision yeah. some decisions like a tattoo pretty permanent yeah. You know, you made that choice once and that's what you're living with. Yeah. But um, most decisions have some flexibility in them. And you, you know, so if you learn, if you get new info and intel down the road, you need to fix it. But learn to become the greatest decision makers in the, in the world. Right. Because yeah. that's what you'll own. Yeah. That will be, your memories will be made on the decisions you make. Yeah. Become a great decision maker. Don't. Don't blame anybody for anything because whatever happens, happens. Yeah. You know? Well, there's Just a decide how you're going to, re you can react yeah. or you can respond. Totally. That's a choice right yeah. there. It's a decision. So yeah. be become a great decision maker in life yeah. and, and own what you make. Yeah. When you own it, even if it's the wrong one, if you yeah. take responsibility and own it and don't blame, you'll be, you'll, you, you'll sleep good at night yeah. and you'll have the fix for it. Right. Yeah, we've touched on a, on this somewhat of the same subject matter in a few of the other podcasts, um, talking about uh, I've kind of brought up with some of the with some of the bands or whatever. Uh, you know, let's get into some of the nitty gritty here. Tell me, you know, some of the um, something funny or embarrassing or rotten that's happened because because the path, you know, I say like with these bands or these young kids, uh, we want the polished image. We want this, you know. And I said, there, there's something to be said with the bad that led to the good. There's oh, yeah. always that in life. You know? And there's always these things that the fault starts with the things that you thought were that, that, that didn't lead out to be what you thought it was and didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Right. And you had to fall on your face and you had to get pick yourself back up and you had to start all over again. And it led and molded you to who you are now and who you will be. Right. With each of these decisions that we make as right. you know we go. And they do somewhat lead into each other. They you know, they they inform you and you would to base your decisions off these things that you're informed by, but sometimes you gotta live and learn and you gotta, you know, make the best call that you can at the time and live with it. And, you know, I mean, yeah, there's regrets, everybody's got them, but I mean, really, in the end, well, sometimes you, 10 years from now, may be molded into something that leads into the greatest thing ever because of that thing that you maybe 
Regretted. held on to and thought was a regret, but actually led to this really great thing down the road, you know? Right. And sometimes you gotta go through that bad to lead to whatever is gonna be good, you know? Well, I think just, well, it's kind of like, I, I think the cosmic forces of nature, and I don't mean to sound like too ethereal or, or like hippy trippy or whatever, but the, uh, I think that you know there are there are forces like you know gravity and the you know the orbiting of the planets. I mean those are some incredible forces that mm -hmm. exist. And no matter what you say or think or whatever you know, no matter what we vote in or out as a law, or, it doesn't. What mankind says is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. It's not going. The sun rises in the west and sets in the east. So that's just the way it is. And, and some of those things, it's like, if we could for just a short period of time have all mankind get on like a big Noah's Ark spaceship and just cruise the galaxy for 10 years and left the, lear the Earth alone, mm -hmm. everything would be right. The environment would be, everything would be perfectly fine. Right. It would all, you know, I taught science to, uh, we homeschooled like four of our six kids. And so awesome. I was like the science teacher. And Good so I relearned stuff that it's like, right. I paid closer attention this time than I did yeah. when I was actually taking it in totally. school myself. But you know, it's like the earth is a, I believe the earth, I mean, it's, it's, this is this is really mind boggling and it probably, probably sound like some kind of fruit, but like, you know, you think of like a flea as a really microscopic entity on a dog and a dog on the earth right but if the earth if what if we were like fleas and the earth is really what if it's a really it's an entity yeah. like for instance you and i are slower than a hummingbird yeah a hummingbird is a small thing if if i moved as fast as a hummingbird i would i would probably self destruct right because it's i'm too grand i'm too much mass to move like that yeah well how much more mass is the earth than us what yeah. if the earth really is alive yeah like i don't know if it's got a name or a personality but it is an entity yeah it's got systems like you've got a cardiovascular and respiratory mm -hmm. system and you've got chemistries you've got multitudes of chemical and systems that all work together to make you a functioning individual right well there's the water system and the rain and evaporation system and there's the rock system where like the tectonic plates are diving down into the molten lava and mm -hmm. becoming liquid again so there are rivers under the plates that are flowing like the rivers we see above land yeah, right. you know I mean I'm just yeah. thumbnailing this but it would write itself yeah. so I believe that good you know there's a balance like people think that balance is five and five but think about it if if ten is a whole five and five could be ten yeah. three and seven could That's be ten say, yeah. you know nine and one could be ten yeah you know when we people are in society we're, we're getting all these things about it's not fair it's not fair it's not whatever but wait a minute okay so I'm gonna make you some fair pancakes I'm going to use a cup of eggs, a cup of milk, a cup of flour, a cup of sugar, a cup of salt, a cup of vanilla. I'm going to, you want some? You want me to make you pancakes? <laughs> it's fair. Right. I used a cup of everything. Yeah. But that recipe would suck yeah, right. for pancakes totally. because you just need a dab of salt. You need a little vanilla. You need two cups of this and yeah. only th two eggs and a cup of milk. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. To make the best blend is not always fair by volume. Yeah. Right. Right. Or yeah. by numbers. Yeah. And and it's really about what it's about. It's about just being the harmonious balance, a harmonious balance. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, harmo harmony at home. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. I know my wife wouldn't share my house with another wife. Yeah. You know, yeah. I got one. That's yeah. harmony right another there. Another buddy. Or exactly. Whatever. Right. Yeah. You know, if I move my buddy yeah, in, it wouldn't work either. You change that whole dynamic. Exactly. It's not harmonious it's anymore. It's not. It's not. You know? And so harmonious yeah. balance is harmony. Yeah. So it's like that. That's those are the decisions that I, you know, I try to live by. That's what I try to teach my kids. That's what I try to, you know, I don't usually have the luxury of, you know, however long we've been here to actually sit and talk with somebody. But if it does, you know, if yeah. I'm at a club and we're hanging out all night, the conversation goes. I, you know, if it gets into this, I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to share because that's that's the only thing I got to give away yeah. is my heart and my thought process. I'm not 
proselytizing. I'm not trying to get no. Andy to believe and no. become a little Robert minion. Yeah. I'm just saying this is where I'm. This is where I reside. Yeah. So if you think about me and you understand me, at least hopefully I framed myself so that you know what you get when you talk yeah, to me. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we're getting a piece of you. Yeah. Or that's all it is. It's not. It's not the end all be all. It's not the gospel. It just is. Everybody's got their entitled uh, opinions and absolutely, you know, insight. And um, if somebody can learn some anything from anything we've talked about today, yeah. it's awesome. You it's know, a great thing. And if they're just entertained at the same token, great. You know what I mean? So, so I'm trying to think of um, trying to think of embarrassing moments. Um, I, don't, I mean, God, I try, I mean, to, I try not to embarrass myself. Yeah, right. But I do know that, like, I was playing this, I was playing this uh, church camp gig. We got called up there. This was like, God, a long time ago. I was young. I don't even know if I was, I was maybe 20. But um, it was rocking. It was a lot of fun. But um, I was just hamming it up on stage with it was it was one of those things where the moment struck and you're doing stuff on stage gymnastic theatric you know movements on stage during a show that you know you're just pushing the envelope and i fell over <laughs> I, f I fell over backwards i was like squatting down and doing like the ingve pose or something yeah, right. like that and i fell i literally fell over backwards and like had to get back up so that was embarrassing right but uh, yeah we all have them yeah, we all so. we all have our i wasn't so cool in that moment situation yeah. where you know because you know being in a band and being you know a musician sometimes is you know gotta look cool Part of it, it's know, part, I, some I think, people. I just, I just you know. think you got to. I mean, I just think you got to do. Um, well, I think everybody. God gave you what you. You know, I use the word God, but you, know, yeah. you got what you got. You were yeah. born with what you got. Right. You know, you can't make any. You can't change your eye color unless. I mean, you could with contacts, but fundamentally, yeah. when you look in the mirror, you strip are, down, yeah. Yeah. you are what you are. But uh, you can abuse it, or you can do the best with what you got. You know, right. you can. You can yeah. run a comb through your hair and take a shower. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's yeah. that's within reach, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so it's just being the very just being the best you can. Right. You know, but I think heart heart transcends everything. Yeah. You know, it really doesn't matter what you look like. Yeah. It's you know, people don't care about what you know until they know about how much you care. Yeah. That's what people want. People want to fit in and they want to be cared for and know that you care. Mm -hmm. And so like that's the one thing that I that I feel like I got, you know. It's Everything else that I do is fun and it's cool and you know if I can if I can make a buck sure I'd rather make a buck than not but totally. yeah. but more than anything it's it's leaving something that transcends me you know yeah so that's great I mean that's that's what it's all about yeah some, some people have yet to learn that and that's okay well that's, so, that's the lesson in life sometimes for some but you know closer you get to that I feel like the better off you are you know. Some of the most humbling things that have that have happened to me is um, the kid who bought the Strat like mine, the the mm -hmm. the, the reverse yeah. headstock one. Um, he is a great kid. Um, he was a student of a friend of mine who basically um, I was just I had just stopped working for my parents and was getting back into teaching and stuff and so I was starting at the bottom I had like two students yeah so I'm scrambling doing stuff in the trades yeah. you know um, carpentry handyman whatever I could do to pay the bills and teaching a couple of lessons in the week and whatever so a friend of mine was he had like a roster of like 50 students and but he lived a ways away from me so I've studied you know people generally will not drive much more than five miles for a guitar lesson so um, the uh, the uh, he was getting out of the business, and so he said, I really like you, I trust you, I'm gonna offer your services to my 50 students. Whoever takes you up on it, great. So I got this big influx of students, and this kid was one of them, and he was like junior high school, seventh grade, when he came to me. And, but he had some learning difficulty. His mom had to really tutor him with dyslexia and things like that. But his parents were super cool. His dad was a big, took him to the Who concerts and stuff like this. This is only like, well, he's 26 or seven now, so that's like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But, wow. But uh, anyway, so 
But this kid was determined, and he worked. I tell all my students, no one's good. Be, no one ever gets good because I'm their guitar instructor. You get good because you go home and you work hard. Yeah. All I I didn't and I I didn't invent anything I'm teaching you. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I will help. I'll fast track you. I'll help you keep yeah. you focused. I'm passing the knowledge along. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I'll, I'll, hope, I'll keep you from having to learn a bunch of stuff you don't need to learn right now. Yeah. Right. The stuff you want to learn is this, this, and this. This yeah. will get you down the road sooner. Start here and work your so, way. Yeah. So he uh, he went through junior high and high school as my student, and then you know by high school he was playing in bands and doing all kinds of great stuff. And then he uh, I went to MI in '85. And uh, he wanted to follow in my footsteps, so he went to MI here in, I don't know, five, six years ago okay. when he graduated high school. Went right to MI and did that and uh, got out of MI. There's a, have you ever heard of the band Liquid Blue? Mm-hmm. All right, look them up. You can okay. Google them. Liquid yeah. Blue. They've got a Guinness Book of World's Records for the world's most traveled cover band. Okay. Um, they've been around. They're based out of San Diego. The principals of the band have been in doing it for like thirty some odd years. Okay. Um, they're semi-retired now, and right. they but they basically just hire all kinds of young people and run under the thing. And then they've got booking promoters that they're global. I mean, these they've got like four teams that are all called Liquid Blue. Okay. If they need an acoustic, they do acoustic blue, Liquid Blue. They do. If they've got. It's just an amazing, amazing production, okay. and they do good. So anyway, he got hired as Liquid Blue. He's been playing with them for like six years right now. Okay. You know, and it's like, um, just yeah. There, I have a. I have several stories of like nature. Yeah. But you know, well, he, rewarding for you on well, the other end as well. well you know. I mean, I mean, but I mean, his parents tell me all the time, "Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you." Um, a sad note. Like I had, I had another student who came to me, similar to the same time. This was. God, it had to have been 15 years ago, and he was about the same age, junior high kid, really troubled, was really just acting out at home and mm-hmm. just really struggling with yeah. life and everything, and got him into guitar, and he really only took lessons with me for about six months. Mm-hmm. But whatever whatever happened, he kept with it. He left and was jamming in bands and playing and everything, so, so he went from like, 12 so somewhere around like 16 years old he was riding a skateboard down the street and he hit a parked car oh man smacked his head and died oh and at his funeral his mom stood up and 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 just said this man changed my son's life because after he took those lessons he was i I saw joy in life and And energy joy in life and energy in 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 his life again and i can't i can't attribute it to anything you know the thing I can attribute it most to, besides maybe a bunch of people praying yeah. for his well-being, yeah. was you know Robert you, Nino, yeah. and I'm like, and you don't, and, and I never knew that, right? Not until his funeral, I didn't know that, yeah. you know. And you're yeah. like sitting in there, and if I wasn't crying then, I was crying then, <laughs> you know. I was like just sitting in there bawling, yeah, right. and so it's like you know, it's the, so, you know, like I said, somebody will auction or buy or steal my guitars when I'm dead, but yeah. you know the things that'll yeah. make a difference are things that you can. You can implant and just yeah. you know enrich another person's life. You right. know what yeah. is it? Give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach yeah. him a fish, he eats for a lifetime. Right. Yeah. Right. So what you can pass on for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. So. I agree. Well, cool, man. I don't know what else we can cover, but I I'd come back it. any yeah. time. Yeah. This is yeah. a good time. Well, definitely. I mean, I have a couple other guests that have mentioned the same thing, so that's cool for me to know that. Oh, yeah. It's going well enough like it's not awkward or weird or anything and people feel comfortable no, dude, enough you're to really... say I'd love to do this again well so you're an interesting cool. person though too yeah. I mean there's definitely de- I mean we don't know each other real well yeah you know and I'm getting to know you as well it's funny I've, I've heard your name around and I've been into the store and I did never put that the Andy that works at Pete's is this other guy Andy that I've been hearing about all the time okay so it was cool it's like oh that's the guy Okay. Right. So, yeah. um, so getting to know, getting to know folks is, yeah. is awesome. Definitely. But it's resources because yeah. it's like you know people go, I want to do. It's like, well, here's this, you know, here's my Rolodex. Yeah. Call them. Call right. him. Call her. Yeah. Do what you well, we're, it's a small town. We got a small knit community. I mean, it's mm-hmm. big and small at the same time. But right. yeah, we it's all support each town. other and we all spread the love. You know, that's what it's all about. So absolutely, we'll, we'll both, I'm sure, continue to do so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well cool, man. thank you for coming on. Thank you for rapping with me and, you know, shooting, the, shooting the shit. So yeah. anyway, we'll uh, we'll talk in the future about trying to, you know, 
make this happen again for sure it was fun yeah yeah now that i mean my my it's in my thinker and you know it just there's a little guy in there with a hammer and a chisel just chipping away at like creative ideas like how can you know how can we take this to the next level or how can we do it to expand you know vertically horizontally or you know in any direction to to a rising tide raises all ships so it's like i'm always thinking about hey we should do this or that or whatever so well thank you again you bet appreciate it my man pleasure well cut it there all right man all right All right, there you have it. It was uh, really great to sit down with Robert Nino there and, you know, having a conversation with someone that has such a long history with music and stories to tell from being a youngster, starting a band, you know, getting an instrument and mastering that instrument, the hours that it takes to be a musician, a good musician who segues from just being a hobby type of player into making something into a career. It was a great conversation. It was inspiring for me to sit down with another individual, like-minded individuals myself, who uh, has gone through these trials and, you know, lessons learned for sure. You had a lot of great information for anybody else out there that is going through that same path, you know. Um, It's really great to have inspiration from somebody. So uh, really appreciate him sitting down, talking to us. Definitely worth mentioning, uh, ninoguitar.com. If you are a musician or know somebody that has uh, guitar repair work that needs to get done, amp repair, pedals, you know, setups, any of that good stuff, definitely check that out. That's ninoguitar.com. Um, he is, as I said, a, a you know musician here in town with his with his with his music that he plays, and they're at Franklin's Cove in Marietta. On Sunday the 25th, I believe he is quite a staple musician over there. So that's definitely worth checking out. Um, Like I said, it was really great to have him on. I'm thankful for all the guests that have been on the show and thankful for the listeners. Um, You definitely can check us out, vibratoryproductions.com. We have Vibratory Productions on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, um, for the Crooked Hearts podcast. So any information that you have about that or if you know a musician in town here that might be a good fit for a guest you know hit us up let us know but uh very thankful for everyone listening this is uh andy the pie deal for the crooked hearts podcast we are out